All right, it looks like we are ready to go here. So let me throw it over to you guys, uh, and good luck on the run. Thank you. Uh, hello, everyone. My name is Ghost Wheel. Uh, this is Kingdom Hearts Chain of Memories. I've been working on this run for a real long time, and ex I'm excited to show you. Um, are we ready to start the timer? Are we ready for everything? Okay, cool. Three, two, one. <laughs> Woo! Enjoy this wonderfully compressed cutscene, courtesy of the Game Boy Advance. <laughs> All right. Uh, I love this cutscene, man. <laughs> so to start, I'm going to give shout-outs to people that I've worked with for a long time to make this run what it is today. You know, Drazerk and Chiron, um, Aqua Tigers post in the SDA forums years back, Ventus Z, you know, um, Abandon the Myriad, Elrin, you know, anyone who's ever picked up Com, even casually, as a speed run, Anyone who's contributed to the route at all, you guys are the best. Um, I also like, to, you know, give a shout out to the RPG Limit Break uh, staff for organizing the event. Um, shout outs to Nami, really great work they're doing, community outreach. Um, I think it's um, really sending the right message, and it, it's definitely worth uh, kicking in a few dollars if you can during this run, especially for the versus battle incentive that we still haven't met, where OC's gonna take me down with a souped up deck <laughs> on another file while I take him down with the speedrun deck. It's gonna be cool. Mm -hmm. um, we have to watch this cutscene every time. These big pre-rendered cutscenes are unskippable. They just kind of make you, um, you know, they, they don't want you to miss anything accidentally. It's God really forbid. important that you see this cutscene. <laughs> But after that, we're going to explain the mechanics of the game while we're going through the tutorial. And then we're going to get um, the first card in the game from a barrel. And this is 10% of the time of Blizzard. We're, if we don't get it, we're just going to use a backup save that I have for convenience so that I can explain the strats that we use during the actual run. That's yeah. the main research at, at point for the run. Like, if you start with a Blizzard, you can generally start the RNG on the right foot. And it's a, it's a pretty good metric to have. Yeah, for those who are not familiar with, uh, that are familiar with Kingdom Hearts, but not necessarily this game, Chain of Memories is a card-based battle system. Uh, and a pretty unique one, too, in the sense that uh, you still have full control over Sora. You can move around, you can dodge, you can jump, uh, but all your attacks are tied to cards. Uh, most of his deck right now is mostly composed of just keyboard cards, and cards in this game have a value of zero, to nine. And only one card can exist on the field at a time. This is a pretty key mechanic in the game. And while that card exists, you're going to run through whatever attack animation the card represents. And while that's happening, your opponent can interrupt your card with higher cards. And if that happens, they stun you and they get to use their own attacks. That's card called a card break. Right here, we're just burning through all our attacks because he's going to teach us how to reload. And basically, when you're out of cards, you get to use this little one card that I have selected right here charging it up and um, you'll get all the cards you use back but that card increases each time you use it and the animation of reloading the cards um, can be a bit tricky especially as your decks get bigger it's ticking through it you can also move through your deck you can cycle through and pick any card you want and when you build your decks you can build them in any order to sort of optimize for this Lastly, he uh, hints at the existence of a second deck. This is for enemy cards, which represent your abilities. And we're going to talk more about that later as we start looking for them. Yeah. Okay, yeah. we're going to go ahead and go open the crack open the barrel. So this is a 10% chance he can get a blizzard right here, right now. And not have to worry about it, but we'll see. Yeah, I um, hope either, way we're, either way, we're going to um, fight the next fight that comes after it because that gets overwritten in this... Um, Backup save. No, no oh. blizzard. Yeah. So we'll we'll showcase this tutorial fight here, and then show you what it would be like if um, I did get a little luckier. Yeah, uh, getting that second blizz at the start of the run just really speeds up the whole grinding process of killing enemies that much faster. And because of that, we do have this save that already has the blizzard, so we can get things started. We, it's got the yeah. worst blizzard I can possibly have, though. It's got the one. So this is the punishment for um, any kind of safety that this You have entails. a one blizzard out of that barrel. Yeah. Oh. So now, once you beat that tutorial fight, you can go instantly into the next room, and only there can you start editing your deck. And the first thing we're going to do is we're going to take out all the cards that are too low to actually function effectively. Um, these twos and ones here. We're also going to move the zero to the back because it's more useful there than... 
elsewhere. We're also going to fill in these holes for my personal convenience in future deck building. After that, we're going to start fighting encounters and getting map cards. We've got a lot of things that we're looking forward to getting in Traverse Town. The first of which is more blizzards to jack up our deck against Guard Armor, Axel, and some of the earlier World 1 bosses. The second is an enemy card that drops from those guys that we just killed right there called the Blue Rhapsody. And and as I said before, enemy cards represent your abilities. Blue Rhapsody enemy card lets you... Wow, that was kind of a weird spawn. Blue Rhapsody enemy card lets you, um, for one reload of cards, boost your, the power of your ice attacks by 1.5. So this is going to be useful when we're building up Blizzard uh, for an early deck for a bunch of bosses. Some of you have made me wondering why I'm holding a T-84 uh, calculator here. <laughs> I've actually got a program installed on this thing that's, that's going to let me keep track of what map cards he ends up collecting here. So this is just going to keep it uh, coming in handy because we, we want to have a certain total value of cards. And like each each room that, that we go through, uh, I think it was a three. Okay. We go through each room and um, the and we have to use a map card to spawn that room. The requirements for going to the next room increase as we keep going, unless we use a zero to reset it out. It's kind of complicated, and there are lots of story doors that have specific requirements that never change over the course of the run. It's very important to memorize what you need to do and save it while you're budgeting your map cards. But as you can see, like we're using this Blizzard right here, um, and like how do we even have Blizzard when we have Blizzard, right? We have um, techniques. Uh, all the all the Aga and Aura spells as techniques through the sliding system and the and stocking cards. It's very very useful. Um, and the way it works is you you put three cards below uh, below your HP bar by pressing L and R at the same time, and then you can use them all as basically one thing with the the value equal to the sum total of the values of the cards you were just using. And when you do this, you lose the first card that you stock for the rest of the fight. But if it's a technique, you can resolve the technique instead of just using the three cards in order. So you get the Aura spells by using two blizzards, and the Aga spells by using like three blizzards, for instance. And we're going to use that to great effect early on and later, because I said we're waiting for these spawns. We want to have the nice area of effect, kill these guys at the same time, start off on the right foot. The only thing you can't use it on is, of course, the blue rhapsodies, the, the floating blue magic enemies, because they're immune to blizzards. Even blue, uh, even Blizzard can't um, avoid stupid spawns like that or shadows hiding underground, though. So sometimes you just got to deal with it. And if all of this so far has been sounding a little bit complicated, Ghost Wheel here has, I believe, a uh, master's in mathematics. <laughs> so sometimes you kind of do need to be a little bit of a uh, math whiz to be able to run this. But uh, that's, I guess. that's more when you're having to do it solo. He's got some assistance with him now, obviously. And Ghost has put in a ton of work into this game. And so now I think it's more just second nature for you at this point, right? But yeah, so we're looking for the Blue Rhapsody enemy card. We're also looking for a red Nocturne enemy card, which we can get by killing the Nocturnes last instead of the Rhapsodies last and having that replace our map card sometimes, that's gonna boost our fire attacks. We also look for Moogle points in these object triggers, and finally, we're gonna look for better Kingdom Keys to round out some aspects of every one of our decks. There's yeah. not really a better place to look for Kingdom Keys than right here. Yeah, you were actually getting some good object triggers in the last round. What was that, a zero? Uh, that was eight. Yeah, and here again, he's using the map card to open the next room, and it was a... It's it, too high, so I'm going to spawn the Teamy Darkness and make an executive decision. Was that a four? So here's a good time to talk about the different types of rooms that different types of map cards can spawn. Um, basically, um, we were in a smaller room before that only spawned five Heartless and had fewer object triggers, but now with Teamy Darkness, we have more Heartless, harder encounters, more object triggers to drop blizzards and moogle points from, and better chance to there get enemy go. cards Red like that. Turn. Okay. Man, the game just loves working with me as far as commentary is concerned. <laughs> um, <laughs> Again, he's still hoping to get a uh, Blue Rhapsody, but the Red Nocturne is certainly something he'll take. It's not. A... It doesn't have immediate use, but yeah. it's quite necessary oh, later on. It's you not... just picked up uh... Yeah, we zero out of this. We don't care about premium cards. Um, premium cards cost less and go away when you use them as if they were used in a slight. We don't really care about the CP cost since every single level we're going to take card points anyway and just get um, really conservative estimates for how many we're going to need. Yeah, card points being uh, uh, CP is kind of like the limiting factor of how many cards you can actually put into your deck. Every card has a, a CP value. Uh, obviously, the more powerful the card, 
uh, the more CP it takes to actually put it in your deck. And the higher the number, too. Like, card quality and card number both influence the CP. Yeah. So with this grind here, uh, I noticed that at the end of all these fights, you're actually rolling back and you know left and right. What is that exactly for? Um, well, at the end of these fights, we pick up the map card, right? But we also actually have to pick up all the experience in order to end the fight properly. So a lot of work goes into just manipulating the spawns, or at least manipulating how you kill enemies, so that most of the experience is in one place. Doesn't always work out for you, but you got to be mindful about. Um, where are you going to be next and how you can roll into the XP at the end of the fight. It can despawn, but that takes a long time too. Yeah, and that's one of those things that's a little different between the Game Boy Advance version of the game and the PS2 remake, also now on PS3 and PS4. Recom. Uh, Recom that a lot of you might be more familiar with. Uh, just from its kind of more widespread oh. nature at this point. Blizzard has great area, but sometimes even then the soldiers can block it off. It's quite frustrating when that happens. Yeah. That's why we're looking to get Blizzard as soon as possible. We want to get that third Blizzard. Opens up a lot of possibilities. It also makes it, uh, the first major boss of the game a lot easier. And every time Ghost is, you know, hitting these objects and, and uh, and jumping on, you know, some of the buildings and stuff. He's looking for uh, primarily, you know, any kind of random cards that he can get for selling later, and also uh, red orbs to drop out, which are Moogle points, which are your currency in this game. Nice. Zero. Zero's good to get now. Like I've been running short on zeros. Oh, oh and a blizzard! And it's awesome. a one. It's a still a one. We're we're dealing with a low value <laughs> game, folks. Uh, we're gonna have to roll with it. Literally a seven value blizzard. <laughs> So again, any enemy, uh, even though he's playing, he might play three cards at the same time, uh, they'll still total up to a seven value. So if an enemy plays an eight, nine, or a zero, it will cancel yeah. his attack. Ten's a pretty hard benchmark that you want to hit for most techniques in this game. Yeah, because it's because a single card can't be higher than nine, for example. And a zero can still cancel out any card. But, but you, you, you never get rid it. of that problem either. Right. Like you, Zeros are always going to exist. And a lot of the way that we play around bosses is we card break them at opportune times and when we know that they don't have slights that can stop me. So they either have to find their zero or just take the damage. But if our slights are too low, they can use their regular attacks to block it as well and they're more efficient at doing that. Yeah, and that's something we might uh, explain a bit more as it kind of happens. It's a bit yeah. easier to see it in action. Yeah, look at that effect. Even though that soldier was sort of walking around in this Brownian kind of thing. We didn't care. He was going to get caught. Yeah, also something to note about map cards as well is there's three different colors types of map cards in this game. Uh, there's red, hey, blue, green. There we go. And blue Rhapsody. Nice. So again, that means he now has a blizzard boost that he can use uh, throughout all of his fights. Yeah. Uh, the thing is with this particular, uh, with Blizzard Boost, is it's the number. Uh, it basically makes it so that his uh, for, before he reloads, when he uses Blizzard Boost, all his Blizzard spells will do 1.5 more damage. Yeah. And you probably won't see him use it too often in this I early that grinding. Card. What was it? Just you do if I get higher value blizzards. It's actually uh, very helpful for one of the encounters, but I'm not going to chance it with a one because these shadows can break that as a single value. But yeah, th with the Rhapsody, a single blizzard can kill a soldier in one hit, and that's just not true otherwise. That was really splayed as far as experience was concerned. All right. We're looking for a nice, decent, like, seed pool of map cards here just to kick us off. We already got the Nocturne, so it's better to do this. Take the loss yeah. of the soldier. Uh, one more Blue Rhapsody would be nice. But for later. We don't yeah. actually care about it until Axel 2, so, like, we can get it in any other future farming run. Yeah, though, at this point, we're a little concerned that, you know, unnecessary enemy cards drop. Yeah, that's because true. He is looking, as he said, for that you know a good a good chunk of map cards he can use to progress through the game. And if you get enemy cards, you effectively kind of lost that spawn uh, in terms of having a chance at a map card. Yeah, but, and like all the time it took to kill it. Like, exactly. A battle that's wasted your time. Yeah, you still get the experience, but it's not quite as important. 
No, the, and honestly, when we come back here later, we're going to be so high level, the amount of experience you get from these fights is, is insignificant. And when, uh, you know, when Ozzy said they're come back here later, uh, the idea, obviously, with Kingdom Hearts is that there are a lot of different worlds, um, and that's true in uh, Chain of Memories as well. The building you're actually in is a building that has 13 floors in it called Castle Oblivion, and those 13 floors each have their own set layout of kind of where the rooms are in alignment to each other, but they don't have a set world. Uh, other than this first one being Traverse Town, the last one being Castle Oblivion. Uh, so Ghost Wheel is actually going to be the one who gets to decide what order he does all the rooms or the worlds in. And this can affect a lot of things. The probably the most influential is the boss HP. Um, we want to have certain strategies dependent on like our deck can do this much damage flat out. It's almost like a Hearthstone value level concept, uh, like an assessment of just how much stuff is in your deck, and like you sort of curve out to make sure that we have this much damage for Hades, this much damage for Parasite Cage, etc. And like, also, you get different enemy cards from different bosses, you get different techniques from the first calm bounty in each world that all play a major factor in determining world order. And like, the world order has changed a lot of times over the years. It's been, <laughs> yeah. it's been fun to watch. Yeah, so far right now I got about 60. For the uh, total cards? I'm, I'm not going to ask you yeah. about that until like two hours from <laughs> yeah. now. All right. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to be good for most of the time. Again, this guy knows how to do most of it in his head. <laughs> He's got the calculator for a little bit of help later on because uh, there are some doors that do have specific requirements to open. Honestly, it's just for convenience too. Like when I do it in my head, it like takes a little less time. It, it takes a little more time just because I'm meeting it out. I have to count the cards manually. But if someone else was watching my run and recording exactly what was happening, they could give me some data in real time. And this is the first time we're doing that. So this is historic in many, more ways than one. I'm helping, yay. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, that was a cute little program I whipped up in TI Basic back when I didn't know how to do anything. <laughs> <laughs> I also didn't want to use a, like my actual computer monitor for it. Have a nice little handheld. Portable game, portable calculator, you know. Works right. out pretty well. <laughs> so we're gonna be taking advantage, like we're not gonna be fighting any more enemies since we got the Rhapsody. We're going to be taking advantage of the fact that when we go into these plot doors and then come out of them, the object triggers are going to be respawned. So we're just going to have an opportunity to hit a bunch of these things. Um, hopefully we hopefully get it. a fourth blizzard. Definitely get like a bunch of nice kingdom keys and Moogle points. Nothing to worry about here. Our second tutorial comes in the, in the first of these plot doors. Um, most of them have cutscenes. Some of them have other stuff. Some of them have tutorials, as you're going to see here. Some of them have mini bosses. Some of them have the actual boss, while the last one's like a cutscene or something. It's usually it, there's always like some sort of. I've always noticed it. It's like three plot doors. Uh, one's the initial plot door. One's the kind of like either a mini boss fight or just another plot trigger. And then lastly is the door that takes you to the final boss. Yeah, some of the worlds are a little bit different on that, but uh, for the most part they follow that pattern. We want to use like in the plot doors cards that we don't want to see in the overworld. Sleeping Darkness is particularly annoying to use in the overworld because Heartless can spawn in front of the door and just cause an encounter a lot of the time. It's very, very inconvenient. But Sleeping Darkness does have its uses as we'll see later in the run because it's got certain properties in certain worlds. Hi, Leon. You have to teach us in this game, too, really? Yeah, he's got to teach us how to car break. He's got to teach us how to do slights. We already talked about it, but, you know, quick talking points. Car breaking is cool. You want to play higher cards than your opponent, countering them and stunning them. Stocking cards is cool. Um, you want to use safe techniques and combine cards for awesome effects. But doing so burns through your deck very quickly. That's the intuition yeah, you want to remember here. Yeah, when you use those you know, three or even two cards stocked together, then you do lose the first one you use. And uh, Ghost will actually be creating his deck specifically with that in mind. Yeah, on. there's only... So, uh, and this is they designed this in such a way because there's going to be slides he's going to be using later on where the first card in the slide actually does matter what kind of ability you end up using. The other thing about this game is that like even when you know what the rooms are going to be like, the like it's sort of nice. procedurally generated in <sighs> these Moogle points. Yeah, they're not spreading for you, but you're getting a lot of them. That's good. Yeah, <laughs> yeah they're, they're like well they're very annoying sometimes. Their hitbox is is kind of awkward, yeah. but. 
Again, those yeah. are the currency. You don't know where the ladders are going to be. You don't know where the doors are going to be. A few times in this game, um, you know, they've randomly just hidden a door behind a tree or something, which <laughs> usually gets covered for. But when it happens and I lose like a minute searching for the door, it really pisses me off. That's fair. Because, again, even though he knows, you know, which, whether he needs to go north, west, east, south, you know, in each uh, room, the room sizes and the, the layout of that room are different based on which map card you use to open it. So you really need to have an intricate knowledge of how they look in every single room. Some of these rooms are just downright impossible to go through. Lasting Days day is like, oh, it's, it's is, stock is it full of... This one? Yeah, it's bad in this one. It's, it's the just worst all, in Recon. It's all cliffs. <laughs> There's nothing you yeah. can do about it. You just gotta find ladders. It actually takes like two minutes to go through yeah. it. <laughs> it's the worst in Recon too, man. You don't find it a lot in this game, but when you do, you put it indoors. Right. This is probably the last room before you can hopefully find another place. I mean, we we already got three, so guard armor's gonna go okay, but if we found four, he'd go really fast. Yep. We're gonna get to add the couple kingdom keys that we picked up here into our deck too, just to make that fight and others more consistent. We got a few cures, that's gonna be relevant. Each of those is like 20 Moogle points a piece or something like that. Yeah. Okay. All right, yeah. We, we're, I think we're good on Moogle points so far. Nah, it's a little low, but not dangerously so, especially since we're moving on early. It's about average for where we're at. So again, you saw uh, when he was opening that door, it required a green card, and it required this you know, heartless symbol on it, and that's the uh, key to truth, the final boss of that world. We're going to break him here just to make sure this lands. I don't want to... He's got sevens and eights in here. Yeah, nice. and when you nice. get that, you get all four of the ring, uh, the limbs quite easily. But we still have to do work with our attack cards. It's not all peachy. I would love to take this moment, especially during boss fights. This is when you start to notice all those little friend cards that are dropping down randomly like that. They're kind of annoying. Friends get in your way, they clog up your deck. <laughs> yeah, they can potentially be a little helpful, but more often than not, they're really just going to be useless. Yeah. Right now, the two particular friends that will drop is either Goofy of course or Donald. The game <laughs> nah, we, we actually want it here. Okay. Yeah, so okay. what he just used there was a gimmick card or a trick card. I call them trick cards because <laughs> I'm wrong. <laughs> but <laughs> and, uh, It's something the boss can pop out when you card break him, and uh, it just generally make, gives you a free chance to hit the boss. Uh, we're not gonna it, it, different bosses have different requirements for trick cards, but yeah. some of them are just a random chance when you card break them. Yeah. Good fight, though. It's a shame. I was kind of hoping to see Dolan because this is usually the. One if you want to speed Dolan. up guard armor and you get really risky, you can <laughs> use Donald and hope for the best. He can uh, cast spells like, if you put more Donald, the spells he casts are higher quality. You get like the R and the Aga spells, but um, you know he can cast Cure anytime. So Hi, Axel. or heal the boss against Axel, for instance. So again, looking down at the bottom of the screen there, you see Blizzard Boost, which is now gone because he reloaded his deck. But uh, he did get a lot of damage with that first Blizzaga that he used. It also helps the fact that Axel's naturally weak against Ice. Yeah. This is going to be a really fast fight. Yeah. There we go. Excellent. So we landed both our stuff easily. When he uses the Toss from far away, it's a little unsafe to use the Blizzaga there because he can teleport out of it very, very quickly. All right. So you want to card break him. This is like the nuance of boss fights. If you have special techniques that deal a lot of damage, but they go away after one use, you're card breaking him. You're lining up that shot. You're getting that damage in. Because missing damage is the way you waste the most time in this game. Yeah. And again, he can pick the order that he does the worlds in uh, because it's all based on kind of what floor you're on. And so he picks Olympus Coliseum next. Yeah, all the worlds reasons. we're going to is basically everything from Kingdom Hearts 1 except for uh, uh, Tarzan's Deep level, jungle, which, I'm, yeah. which is unfortunately at the time uh, there were some copyright issues when they were making this game. And there's a couple of other added levels as well. All right, this is the first time we're going to encounter blue cards. And this is very important to mention because there's particularly one card that we're looking out for, and we call it the one blue. I mean, it's literally just that. It's, it's a blue a with a value of one, but it's the most notoriously hard to open door in the game. OK, well, we got the calm down early. That's nice to That's see. Uh, we're almost running through talking points faster than <laughs> I can. Like, we're, we thought we were going to have about. like 30 more minutes of grind, man. 
But yeah, he wants the calm bounty uh, specifically in order to get what slate? Uh, Blizzard Raid. It's one of the reasons we come to Olympus, because they give you a very nice technique. Yeah, I, re I remember I tried to use Blizzard Raid in uh, Recom. It's not as good as it's this It's not one. nearly no, as not good. Quite. <laughs> it's, it's, Blizzard Raid in this game is actually really, really good. Yeah, you'll see it uh, fairly soon, but it benefits a lot from the 2D nature of this game. Even though it's, it's 2.5D, but it benefits from that whole you know horizontal arc that it, it, uh, uh, it gets. You know, like, you wouldn't think it, but the hitboxes in the overworld are not obvious. And, like, I almost hit that shadow there. That's how annoying it is. Um, so yeah, we're getting a Blizzard Raid, and the way it's executed is you use Blizzard and then two attack cards, and you toss it out there, um, hope for the best, and rack up a lot of damage by doing it. Basically, you're going to see it here in this cloud fight. It's pretty cool. Um, they're going to take damage from the slate as long as it remains in their hitbox, and you know their invincibility frames go away. Oh wow, rude. Yeah, he's been a little bit of a jerk. Hopefully this works anyway. Yeah, cool. Nice. Yeah, five hit is definitely what you're looking for in this fight. Um, nice hit. I don't. Oh. I don't want to oh. tie this. I'm just yeah. gonna let it happen. Okay. He doesn't need to be. He doesn't need to worry too much about these next two because he does have enough blizzards. Yeah. There, there we, we go. go. Got the three. Wow, he actually jumped right into the s a third hit too. It's great. Yeah, okay. so that is already the power you're seeing with Blizzard Raids. But again, we lose that first card, so once we use those Blizzard Raids, those Blizzards are gone. We don't get a second reload with this deck. For that battle. Just, yeah. just to be clear, yeah. they're not gone forever. Yeah, with this... <laughs> <laughs> that would really suck. So what we're looking for right now is a second calm bounty to get a corresponding fire raid for Monstro. It's faster to farm here than in Monstro, because Monstro has a, little, a few more like caustic encounters that have you know green requiems and stuff. So we got that calm bounty. We can leave. We're all good. We are still looking for that one blue though. Yeah, yeah. I know. I mean, like it's it may actually suit us to farm here a little more since we left Traverse a little early. Mm -hmm. So I think I'm just gonna clear out this room just. For sanity's sake. Yeah, the last thing you want to do is go uh, progress far, realize you're low on map cards, and have to go back. I mean, it's like not that slow to go back as anyway, but we want to give ourselves the best odds of finding the one blue. Um, it's another thing I didn't mention, but the value of each map card, it's not a uniform distribution like you might even see in Recom. You, it's more common to find cards in the middle end of the spectrum than it is to find really high cards and really low cards. And this can be a big deal when we're saving up high cards for doors that require a 99 sum of cards, for instance, and a 50 sum of cards, for instance. And we're not our, our recom. We can't use um, <laughs> jokers. Yeah. We're not Riku mode. We don't have easy doors. So we got to save these high cards over the course of, of, of the run using um, very state-of-the-art map planning. Yeah, so he'll be getting over the course of yeah. the run something on the no. order of 150 no. or so. Yeah, that's, that's about right. I never really counted it. Yeah, but it's it's a lot. <laughs> yeah, you might have noticed he just ran away from that fight. That that's fi the one fight in this place you don't want to do. Yeah. It, it, and that's because it spawns three Rhapsodies afterward. You, like, it just takes too long to kill him with the, the Keyblade hacking away at him. Seven. So we got the Moogle Room, which is good. We got the other Calm Bounty, which is good. If we get two more, I, I think we got two moments reprieved here as well. So literally the only blue card we're looking for for this run is the one blue. The reason I wait is because the Power Wilds can sometimes spawn, and we do want to fight the encounter with the Power Wilds. It pays to be optimistic in my mind, or at least. I hope so. Okay. Yeah, there you go. For a second there, I thought you were getting the same fight over and over. No, no, no. We broke it up in the uh, other part too. Now, you're seeing him use a potion there. That just refills all of the uh, attack cards, cards in yeah. this deck. The, and the ones that were... Uh, it doesn't get back the ones you lost in slides, too. Right. That's for higher quality item cards to do. Yeah, there's a, either specifically go after use magic cards. Yeah, we don't mind. Uh, because you uh, donated for it, we're going to block two and... Uh, the prerequisite in order to unlock the elixir in this game. We may pass the elixir. I'm telling you, see, <laughs> if we have a good enough deck, we're just gonna do it. You walk with Pooh. You go, you take the time. You he may the he may just go in that hole anyway, though. Pooh just wants to go anywhere he he pleases. <laughs> take that chest. Dude. We are talking about Winnie. The My Pooh, OCD the is yeah. telling me to open that chest. Oh, nice dodge on that. Anyway. Oh yeah. All right, so another thing, I'm hitting barrels in this place, and barrels only show up in a few worlds that just decide to have them. Uh, we kind of screw up the LR for that thing there. But anyway, barrels are guaranteed object drops with a side chance of turning into an enemy that's relatively easy to farm, so it's kind of a win-win. 
Oh man, warp strats incoming. <laughs> Alright, so we're gonna fight Hades now, and he's actually kind of a tough boss if you're using anything other than this strategy. Because he deals a lot of damage and he's very, very aggressive. He is weak to ice though, like Axel. So Blizzard Boost is really, really useful on him. Four hits the gold standard. If you can like get to this distance, you're kinda good. Alright, here he goes. He's got his berserk up. Oh. Uh, we got one more, though. Yeah, there we, we go. It's okay. okay to be a little risky with that. Yeah, this is the danger of this run in general, is because you have such limited opportunities to use these really powerful combo attacks. It's If you miss, they're gone. You're not yeah. using them again, and the fight is going to... It's, it's almost better to just die and start <laughs> over than to Sometimes. Try to sometimes. If it can go really bad. Yeah. yeah. Probably not this early, <laughs> but sometimes. But uh, yeah, again, on to the next world now because he's now on the third floor of Castle Oblivion. Yeah. The enemy card he got from Hades, the Hades enemy card, is a particularly important card in this run because that is what's going to allow him to use Berserk. Oh, yeah. We love Berserk in this game. We're going to go to great lengths for entertainment. Um, to clarify, what is Berserk exactly? Berserk is basically, for 30 attacks when you use it, you get to have double damage if you're in flashing red health. So... Yep, as long as the Berserk Blitz doesn't happen, of course. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, the Berserk Blitz is, is, isn't exactly, like, unknowable or something we can't play around, but there's a programming error in this game, which is kind of funny, that um, flashing the graphics for flashing red health appear 1 HP before Berserk activates. <laughs> like there's a, It's, like, less than or equal to the threshold for the graphics and equal to the threshold otherwise. Or whatever, it, or less, less than, than less yeah. than is what I was looking for. Yeah, it's for. pretty obvious. It's been a long day stream. Oh, zero blue. <laughs> okay, not quite the one blue. Yeah, it's unfortunate. You always know when it happens when uh, if that glitch triggers as well, just because uh, you know you're just not dealing the damage yeah. you need to. Yeah, so that is what makes this run pretty drastically different from uh, the recom run is being able to use Berserk means that he's going to have to stay at low health a lot of the times, like uh, uh, once we get a bit further into the run, and uh, deal a lot more damage that way instead of kind of, you know, having boring stun locks for bosses. <laughs> I keep having to remind myself. Oh, see, oh, look oh. at these hitboxes. <laughs> They're insane. This is a little too bad, I think. The nice I, thing I usually err on the side of fighting it, but that's a little too bad. And the nice thing about those rooms, though, even if they do have kind of the weird hitboxes, is once you run from a, a fight uh, from a whoa, with a heartless that's in that's your why way, I don't I don't run out the gate in sleeping darkness. Yeah. <laughs> once you run from a fight that uh, with a heartless that was standing there initially, it's gone until you leave and re-enter that room. Ah, shoot, I must have missed the card somewhere. I've got a minus. Yeah, I got a minus six somewhere. Ah, we'll put Cloud in, just in case. He's usually a safety measure um, if we don't have enough raids, and we're kind of on the edge of wanting to have him. Oh, yeah, we're getting to the well gauge. Oh, boy. But we're doing Parasite Cage right now, and he's kind of an interesting case because you just saw we were shredding people with four hit raids. Parasite Cage has the finickiest hitbox in the game for this, so we're going to stand in the back stone and let it fly. This is going to be a two-hitter. Yeah, I can tell. Whack, whack. Um, the central mechanic of the Parasite Cage fight that we exploit is that opening his mouth gives us trick cards, and hitting him with fire opens his mouth. All right, that's four. We might get all three in. It's a very tight window. Yeah, we'll do it. Cool. Nice. Now we're going to start reloading and hitting with Cloud a bunch. Yeah, and you'll notice in his deck, those blizzards are gone because he used them in those slights, like we mentioned before. So that's one of the reasons he put Cloud in there is to be able to kind of help out in those scenarios. If we hit that that fire raid, though, we would have had um, a bit more of a time save there. And there he got the Parasite Cage enemy card. Something that's actually going to become uh, of niche use. Yeah, niche use and the Riku Ansem fight later on. 
Well, yeah, but we that's that's for Riku. But we also use it in um, Hook and Vexen. Its purpose is to break enemy cards, basically. It's it's the balancing factor in versus mode for that. Oh, oh I didn't even see that guy. Nice. I saw him, but <laughs> I moved the wrong direction anyway. Yeah, and again, he does still need some more map cards, so it's not the worst This thing. is a good encounter. It's only yeah. a chance of being bad when you run into random stuff here. Oh. Wow, we couldn't squeeze through there. <laughs> this is okay to fight, too. Yeah, it's, it's actually quite impressive how many, like, battles you've memorized in this yeah. game. Because there's, like, different spawn encounters that you get, get per world. And to be able to recognize instantly with just in seconds of which one you're currently dealing with. <laughs> <laughs> Love these hitboxes. Love them. That's, that's how you hit a door. But having, it's okay. This fight's also good. Uh, having to keep track of, okay, I see, you know, uh, three power wilds or something, you know, when I walk into a room, that means I'm going to get... What? Hey! Hey! All yeah. right, so we do not have to use my emergency marathon safety save that gets the one blue. Um, that's that's a card that can indefinitely stall you, and it has happened to me before. All right. We got, all right, this is the well gauge. This... Uh, the, you will notice that immediately there's a meter that's building up on the right. That meter builds up as you kill the sh Heartless Shadows here. Uh, if you do not kill these things fast enough, the meter will start to drop. And you're, sometimes you're just sitting there waiting for the shadows to spawn. And, the, and you're just stuck there waiting and the gaze starts dropping. And then eventually you start running out of cards. If I'm like staggering the kills here just so I can make sure that I get one. Oh my god, that wasn't oh enough. No. No. Yeah, so that bar. No, oh, he no, hit. No. Oh. All right. Well, get we him, Goofy. <laughs> yeah, and this is one of those fights that's pretty drastically different from its counterpart in Recom. Yeah. Again, it's the danger here is he's used all his most powerful cards that kills enemies fast. So we can still do this. Yeah. This is very, very manageable right now. Oh. Okay. Come on. We're going to go to Cloud early, though. You do have that, Donald, if you want to give him a chance. <laughs> do we really want to? Um, okay, cool. So this is a slower Sorry. fight, but not a dead fight. Okay. Once he gets up to that gold bar, he just needs to kill all the remaining yeah. enemies. Get him! Wow, that was actually a pretty good Donald. Yeah, it was. <laughs> the last shadow, dude. <laughs> this guy's got your number. I just <laughs> shadows are jerks in every Kingdom Hearts. If game. I run away from him, he'll just hide or something, <laughs> and then or he'll chase me and attack me. You just gotta insane. take through it. <laughs> he was like kicking you with the shin, dude. Oh. All right. So since we got the one blue before we hit Wonderland, and we have a Nocturne. We're actually going to go back to Traverse Town here. A lot of the times we'd farm in Wonderland because it's easy to do. They don't have anything that um, resists blizzards and lots of nice compact encounters. And we would have been prepared to stay there for like four rooms. We can just go back here, make another deck, um, and sort of farm Traverse Town the way we've been doing. That would be a great opportunity for me to step in, right? Uh, sure, yeah, definitely. Because I have gotten a ton of donations from your community going, pray for the one blue. <laughs> and it's like, I'm going to feel really silly reading these right now. <laughs> Read them anyways. I'm going to, because I don't mind feeling silly for a good cause. Ray667 <laughs> with $5 saying, yo, Ghost, I have to ask, when's Darkest Dungeon? <laughs> anyway, good luck with the run, and I hope the one blue doesn't troll you for too long. Ragnio with $15 saying, Ghost, my friend, I have to sleep so I can't stick around to watch, but I know you'll show off an incredible run to all the wonderful viewers at home. Here's to the glory of five hit raids and the one blue. <laughs> oh, yeah. Best of luck, you're the man. Some of each so far. <laughs> Ghost Kong G2. Oh, Ghost King. Yep. Uh, sends uh, $1 and uh, brings back some memories from last year, I think. He says, Hey, Ghost, here's a compromise. You get to be Ghost for this run, <laughs> but I get to be Ghost for my run on Wednesday, and here's hoping we actually get to hang out sometime this week. Oh, yeah. Maybe even get Ghoul in on it and have the spooky crew. Good luck on Com, and remember the magic words. G-Fire! Oh, yeah. That's, uh, that's a reference to Radiant Historia from last year, which is good times.
Uh, Vaz with $50 saying, Hi, Ghosty Poo. I'm staying up the week before my finals to watch you play this game you put so much time and effort on. Make us proud. Show everyone how awesome Chain of Memories really is. And P.S. Pray for the early one, Blue. Oh, yeah, we got it, guys. Your prayers have been heard. <laughs> Uh, $10 from Elrin1900, who just says, May the one blue be with you, Ghost Wheel. Uh, an anonymous $50 donation saying, Wishing you support, Blazblade. All right. <laughs> from your friends at Smogon, putting all of this towards your incentive. Nice. $5 from one, I say, Hey, Persi Oh, he's not here. Uh, <laughs> so, don't you think that GBA music is quite off key? It's just a little different. Yeah? Oh, oh wait. It took you that long to sink in. <laughs> I'm desensitized to him at this point, man. <laughs> J Hobbs just like, I, I disagree with all of your buttons. Uh, and an anonymous $25 donation that says, What? No 100% ghost? I'm disappointed. <laughs> um, I'll tell you what. If we get the rare enemy drop off of the mushroom enemies, we'll go for it. <laughs> <laughs> and then I have $50 from the Burning Hunter. Who says, this hand of mine is full of cash. Its loud roar tells me to grasp victory for Nami. Hey guys, first time watching, so I wanted to help out. Here's $4 for I Am Gundam, and $45 to name Luminaire Burning Finger. Because not even mental illness can stand up to the King of Hearts. You know uh, what, I still think we can make I Am Bread have a comeback, okay? I don't know, man, I Am The Lore is pretty fantastic. <laughs> it is good, yes. but is it bread? Is it bread? It's a good question. It is a group. And just while I've got this, let me give an update on the versus mode. Yeah, we actually got a bunch of donations towards it. It is currently sitting at two hundred and fifteen dollars out of three hundred. Oh, awesome! Wow. Hey, guys, great wanna, job, guys. You want to give a quick get recap, this met, guys? You want to give a quick recap of what? Yeah. That so is? what you're donating for right here is I take the speed run deck and I run it against um, a nice casual file that I ran up with a um, a bunch of cool attacks that OC has. And, you know, we're going to see who wins. Because you can actually play in multiplayer in this version of the game. Like, you, you can actually fight each other. It's maybe the first time anyone's ever played multiplayer in this game since, like, <laughs> 2005. <laughs> wow, you're giving this game way more credit. <laughs> yeah, 2004, I guess. Fine. Yeah. I know I played it once, and I was I had, like, my level 99 guy against his level 20 guy, and he was like, never again. <laughs> Yeah, uh, I've got a pretty fun deck that Ghost assembled for me. Because he was like, hey, Ars Arcanum is fun, right? It's this amazing ability. Unfortunately, its value is six, so he's going to break it every time. <laughs> <laughs> All right, uh. um, so what else are we going to talk about here? So we need to get a couple map cards just to continue on with uh, the run. But then after that, we're going to have a nice, faster strategy getting these map cards. I just checked, we have all the blue cards we need, everything's good to go. Um, we can talk about some of the other centers you donated for as well. We're gonna do the Ansem fight at the end of this fight, uh, at the end of this run. Wow, we really wow. don't need three <laughs> Nocturnes, but okay. Can I? Can we make this a recon run real quick? Because that's exactly <laughs> what you want for that run. <laughs> But so anyway, it, like um, we're gonna fight that not at 80 HP because that is not by any stretch marathon safe. We're gonna double the lowest HP you can have, and we're gonna fight the the final boss of Riku mode, um, and it's gonna be pretty intense. Ansem chucks cards at you faster than you can see him, um, deals a lot of damage whenever he feels like it, and can shut you out without question. Yeah, and like really he's he's the reason the like um, the GBA Riku run is hard. The, even a little bit hard, right? And most of the bosses are pretty much free, and then you just you spend an hour and 20 minutes getting the Ansem, and then you lose to him, and it's run over. And generally, it's it's a huge frustrating frame for casual players. You know, I'm not 100% sure that this donor had heard me speak before they wrote this donation, but this might actually be quite funny. Uh, $25. Hey there, cats and dogs. Ghost Nation represent. I'm riding under one blue. Gooby and Dolan swagging it up. Uh, Norkan heading into battle. Here's hoping for another where's the door moment in this marathon. With all the map cards, get ready for some Geo funny colors. Yo, Ghost, what's five hit raid me? Just the ghost's way too intense to be a environmentalist. You got this one, kid. You know how to pilot the shop. 
Don't use the one blue by mistake. Also, <laughs> special request, Trinity Limit on the final boss. This little interview, interlude of surre surreality was brought to you by Gallup. That's all, folks. I'm signing out. Always listen to Ghost Wheel, the king of games, the lord of the berserk strats, the ultimate computer of the multiverse. And finally, always remember, kids, the plow train has no brakes. Yeah, so that's that's one of my best friends, you know, Gallup. He's, he chills out in a lot of my streams, just providing good conversation during these farming segments. All, all around really good guy. He made a ROM hack of Fire Emblem uh, 7 that... Um, he, he's played and just sort of enjoyed making. Yeah, like, definitely a guy to check out. Definitely someone you're going to get to know if you ever run by this, this uh, the stream looking for more com runs. Yeah, he said he was going to say something, but boy, he delivered. Yeah, I think every year he's <laughs> just going to... Oh, gonna, boy, howdy, did he. Yeah, he's just going <laughs> to give you the most inside jokes possible, alienate the entire uh, viewer list. <laughs> Even I watch the streams, and I'm literally alienated. It's yeah. okay. <laughs> It was all in good fun and in good cause. Um, I think we're gonna do. We're, we're gonna leave here after this or one more teaming darkness. I think I'm just gonna make it one more just for safe, safety because it really isn't that much slower to do blizzards over thunder. Hey, good value. When um, things go well for you. And all right. What, uh, you, you said you know blizzards over thunder. What do you mean exactly by that? Okay, so um, later in the game, once we beat Lark Scene One, we're gonna get the thunder magic card, and we're gonna multitask a Moogle Room. We're gonna get some thunder from the magic packs, and as it turns out, Thundaga has properties that allow you to clear um, every single encounter as long as you wait for all the spawns. So it's very very useful for getting the high volume of map cards we need to finish this game. Yeah, something I've been meaning to ask you, Hobbs. What exactly do you do in Recom? <laughs> what do you mean? <laughs> you said you needed like three Nocturnes. <laughs> yeah. So in this game, or in uh, you know, in GBA Com, you use a lot of a varied, lot of different decks. varied strats with blizzards and some fire raids, blizzard raids, uh, blizzagas. Uh, Thunder and Thundagas, as he said, and a lot of Berserk strats, so your Keyblade cards matter. In Recon, we use Fire. Yeah, it, that's, uh, that's it. That's fire all. Home's a lot better in 3D than it does in 2D. It just goes in a straight yeah. line and misses them. <laughs> There's nothing to do about it. And oh. we use uh, Blizzard on the two bosses that are immune to Fire. <laughs> <laughs> wow, but. what varied yeah. gameplay you got. <laughs> so the solution comes down to apply Fire. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> That's why we've got GBA com in this marathon and not recom. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this is this is the master race, but people don't like to stream it a lot. People don't like it's hard to come by, say, you know, Game Boy player, legitimate methods of um, getting records. Uh, I, I do have a personal shout I want to give uh, somebody in our kind of like little community of uh, com pl uh, players is uh, Cheese. He came up with like a a, re a com. Randomizer. Wow. Uh, it changes what cards you, uh, you get from. Like it just it basically swaps the memory slots yeah. of the cards. So, you know, the initial deck instead of getting a Kingdom Key, I all of those would be replaced with Lion Hearts, for example. Instead of my Magic card uh, Blizzard, all that's replaced with Stop, and so on and so on. So like you can get decks that are incapable of doing damage to Axel, for instance, which is what happened to me in my first randomizer. <laughs> run. Yeah, uh, it's. It's honestly pretty amazing that he's These actually taking the time to do it, you know? Yeah, that's unfortunate, getting those shadows. It's okay. Um, we're going to leave after this Teaming Darkness nonetheless. We'll reassess if we have to, but we're more than comfortable not farming anymore from here. Yeah, even if he tried, uh, you know, this grinding, it's it, its not for levels exactly, you know, or to make him stronger exactly. It's, we don't care about it, levels. Yeah, <laughs> he doesn't care about any of that. In fact, there are times where you even don't want to get level ups uh, for health level ups later on. But uh, the main thing is that even if he just kind of tried to blitz through the game and just, you know, keep pushing through the worlds, he would run out of map cards. So he has to do this either along the way or all at once, and it just turns out that it's faster to do it all at once. And it's still split up a few times. But. Yeah, the, you, the best strats come later in the game, yeah. so there's like a bit of a calculus you have to do there. Yeah, you want to have enough map cards to get you to the point of optimal grinding. Yeah. 
the closer that you can get to the the exact number you want without going uh, going too far over. Well, you yeah. also want to save the high value map cards too. You know, you you still want to have a good pool so that you're flexible in how you branch your map cards. Yeah, those values matter because later on he's gonna have to open that 99 map value door. Yep. Uh, what he has a he's already opened the 20 value door, right? We're low on Moogle points too, so we're taking a few liberties with this run. We're stretching in a couple of places, but these aren't places we can't make up through other means. That's yeah. also every GBA com <laughs> run. <laughs> Yeah, fortunately, Pack uh, going to the Moogle room and buying packs. Uh, he's gonna open up some uh, uh, weapon packs, which cost like a hundred Moogle points. But the ones that are really important, the magic packs, those cost two hundred Moogle points, and. Yeah, they start to add up in cost after a while. They also give you random magic cards out of them. You know, they were doing loot boxes way before Overwatch. Yeah. <laughs> you don't get to just pick exactly what you want. Oh, no, I didn't get the cards I wanted in the current meta. Great. <laughs> well, the way we resolve that problem is by opening packs that we know have everything we want. They can't, get, <laughs> they can't possibly give us anything bad. You'd think that. <laughs> well, 90% of the time. <laughs> Wow, a pack of five cures. This is great. <laughs> I mean, we're talking about the attack cards here. The magic cards are open season. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> uh, though it would be nice to get a couple. Uh, like, I think you got one bonus zero off of a random uh, object trigger, so one more would be nice. No, I mean, we're going to get one out of the, uh, the attack card packs usually. You usually get two. One is kind of rare. Yeah, typically, like in any casual run, as well as this run, having like three zeros in your deck, just kind of hanging in the back so you can always know where they are. This is kind of a relatively nice. inconsequential mini boss. Like the card soldiers just line themselves up and die. Yeah. Um, except for that middle guy who has really long attack range for some reason. So we wait for the other guys to kill him. Just a bit of efficiency there. Yeah. Okay, so we're going to do the key guidance room and then coming up is Trick Master. And the way that fight's going to work is um, we're going to get real close to him and we're going to abuse the wall um, to get higher hit raids. It's kind of funky that way. When we um, go through, like once we have a nice pool of map cards and we're starting to dip into it, right, you start to notice trends in the kinds of cards you can get. And so I was talking earlier, and I don't know if I finished that thought about how some cards are more common than others, but the three, four, five, and six cards are the most common at 15%. And we want to use those as often as possible. We also just want to look at how, like, which cards have deep stacks, and if we have um, a branching point, we want to dip into that. Like, you use the card one lower than the card you have multiples of, and then you use the multiples in each of the branches. So here we have a bunch of sixes. We're just going to dump that into the door. No problem. And we again, should probably not do that again for that green card, though, since we got the 30 green. And, and again, because this it, that was a story door, the actual you know layout of the room isn't going to matter. Uh, and so that's why he wants to use a room that's not going to be useful for him for good movement. Oh, that's the one thing we don't want to see him do, because that makes him go away from the wall. Wow. Oof. Good job, Trick Master. Good to know you suck. Yeah, it's it's completely pointless to use his... Uh, you uh, have to card break card. him to hit these raids, by the way. But you'll get four hit raids if you do. It's Ugh. annoying. He's just being a real jerk right now. He's got to walk back, too, you know? <laughs> he just he can't make up his mind. All right, so now he's real close. Yeah, so we can just finish him off. If we had five raids, he'd just be dead, but this is not that much slower. That is one of the things, because all of your you know, your cards are random, you have to be able to fight pretty much any boss with two Blizzard raids or three Blizzard raids or four. If I know all the kind of advanced strats you can with do. With Nocturnes, without Nocturnes, yep. with Clouds, without Clouds. You know, there's this... Um, there's a lot of nuance in what can happen, and there's a lot of nuance in how to deal with that as well. I'm hoping you get like five more fires. Uh, we, because we pause you a little have early because you get to hold start <laughs> to skip all the cutscenes. That's what makes this game um, about as grindy as any other RPG. You get to skip all the cutscenes for free, but you have to farm for some map cards. <laughs> yeah, I didn't realize when I was trying to go through this game again. Uh, you actually have to hold start for uh, for like a brief moment of time, and then it actually skips. 
the speedrun community yeah. didn't either. Like the very <laughs> first speedrunners of this game were like, I just I keep mashing through all this text. It's really annoying. It's wearing on my endurance. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So here we're gonna take damage intentionally because now the berserk strats are gonna get let loose. Um, and they're actually giving us the best pattern to do this for now. Um, okay. Say that as they slow down. Oh. <laughs> you got you to gotta have that perfect balance of not wanting to quite be low enough to die. <laughs> yeah, that's why we went to 110 HP in a couple of levels. But every other thing we did was, um, what's it called, CP. We want to increase the offensive capabilities of our deck. We want to increase the capacity as much as we can so we never have problems. We can always add cards to the deck no matter how much luck we have. And um, we want to make sure we can go into Berserk, take damage from green into red without it possibly being green into zero. Okay, so we're looking for a nice branch in these fours. Yeah, so again, all of these, uh, you know, layouts, he, he doesn't necessarily... Uh, he, he can't have a consistent always uh, layout of what the room will look like, but the doors will always be in the same, you know, northwest, uh, east or south positions, and he's always going to go through the same set doors on each uh, floor. All right, do I have more sevens? Eh, not that I really want to get into. So, you know, that kind of hesitation was a little long for me, but you want to really make sure you have your plan laid out before you go get to the door. And then you just you go to the stack, you spam him into the door, and that's what separates a good comm runner from a great comm runner, in my opinion. Being able to just know exactly what map cards you're going to be able to use multiple floors in advance. Yeah, and that's where not having to look at, you know, the calculator or a computer monitor or anything like that is really uh, really comes in handy. Just being able to think, I have this many, you know, teeming darknesses or something. Or Animatedly, even I'm traveling travel because he's going through those map cards so qu uh, quick, I'm having <laughs> difficulty keeping up with him. Yeah. <laughs> so right there, like... Minus four, right there. <laughs> We're going to need to go back to Traverse Town, I think, because I don't think we have another three. Yeah, okay, we have to go back after this fight. But we're going to do this fight first. We're going to be in Berserk. We're going to showcase this stuff. It's going to be good. All right, so we're going to make a new deck here. We're going to put the zeros in the seven, and then we're going to one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Potion... Berserk. Yeah, and he was always favoring high value uh, keyblades there whenever possible. Oh. Actually, we're favoring high quality keyblades here because well, Oogie Boogie <laughs> doesn't do anything okay. to you. This I, is the easiest boss in the game right here. By the way, I have a question for the chat. I want to know what do you think Oogie Boogie is saying? That right there is what he was talking about. Come on, baby. But he, like, um, he'll toss out a seven three times, and if you break that seven every time, he'll just lower the gate down and you can hit him. So we just need to be able to do that very efficiently. Unfortunately, the raids are not efficient against him. You can't get the proper distance. So we have to take advantage of these Berserk strats. And taking, you know, getting double damage here is well worth, you know, taking all the damage earlier because lowering these gates takes a lot of time. And if we had to do that two more times, I don't think you could continue. But we got the trick card there, so we actually That's don't good. have to lower it anymore. If we get the trick card earlier, actually, it lowers it for longer, but it doesn't change the cycle unless we get, like, really lucky with the add-on keyblades we have. Obviously, the better keyblades deal more damage, but there's a bit of a nuance to that as well that we'll go over when we make the second Berserk deck. Mm-hmm. Yeah. To answer your question, Ozzy, they, they have no idea. <laughs> <laughs> no one will agree. I, I personally go with Hog, maybe. That's what I heard when I was a kid. <laughs> It's not Hog, right, Hog, but we've got you know, Hogma I B. also call them trick, <laughs> trick cards. Hogma B, R Baby, uh, that's, that's Com where running, Baby. <laughs> that's where running the other games can help you a little bit. Being able to recognize things that the GBA chipsets say. <laughs> her audio chip, that is. Hey, the GBA trip tries. Okay. <laughs> Quote, unquote, <laughs> saying. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So we need to get a three? Yeah, we need to get a three, but we are also just kind of low anyway on map cards. Just make sure we're good enough for this All right, this second. is as good a time as any for a donation, then. Yeah. Lovely. All right, I got a couple here. <laughs> $5 from Vic, who says, This run is awesome. 
so far. I love this game as a kid, and shout out to my boy Spike in the back. Meteor Black Dragon! <laughs> Good luck on the rest of the run. That's More a car game. To come. <laughs> and a $10 anonymous donation. All right, we got our three. We'll just clear out the rest of this room. Oh, sorry, continue. $10 anonymous donation. It says, hey, y'all, Aquana here. Been following the KH community closely for a while, and KH has always been very important to me. Here's $10 to the level one Sefi fight, because that ought to be a real treat. Thank goodness you're sparing my boy Demix. All he wants to do is make water dance. Is that so wrong? Hashtag justice for Demix. Yeah, it's pretty wrong. Demix should stop doing that. <laughs> we'll be able to be running into some more organization members in this game, specifically. Yeah. Uh, eventually, uh, let's see. Larkseen, Larkseens, Axel, uh, Vexen, Marluxia. And he, hey, in Recom, you know, this is one good thing for it. You get the Zexen fight. Unfortunately, you don't have that here, but it's really, really cool, and it stretches the uh, card mechanics quite nicely. So we're going to go to Agrabah here. We're going to keep a mind, uh, a watchful eye on our experience because we did not go to Wonderland, and we did not level up a lot by going to Wonderland. So getting the double Berserk is going to be quite the ordeal. Oh, we should get all this because that level up's coming. Yeah, what he means by that is that uh, he oh wants to Oh my god, be 837, that's tight. I right, continue. Yeah, when he's going to go fight Jafar, he's going to be using Berserk Strats. Which means he wants to, you know, before he goes fights Jafar, he wants to take a lot of damage so he gets in the critical range for Berserk to actually work. Is this even feasible? I'm, we're going to go for it. Like, we have to believe, but this is barely feasible. If we go below, like, I think it's 7... 787 or 7 like 68 or something like that it's some something in the 700s um yeah and then jafar's experience is going to be enough to level me up and you can't despawn the boss experience like i just despawned the experience in that last fight so yeah this you is gotta important grin and bear because it. you gain uh he wants to keep his hp at critical level after he beats the jafar in order for that to happen he can't level up after beating jafar leveling up restores all your hp yeah, that is the, one of the kind of weird things you can try to do in a run like this where, uh, or a game like this rather, where the experience all drops, you know, on the field. <laughs> you can actually try to dodge it and not level up. As I said earlier, someone said, you know, you're at a charity speed running marathon for RPGs where you say, I really shouldn't level up right now. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to get that with another Kingdom Hearts run later too. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, that door was in the corner. I knew. I knew. <laughs> oh, this game's evil. <laughs> Just a quick update. We are now at $220 out of 300 for the versus mode battle after the run. Awesome. So let's keep the donations coming in for that to watch. Uh, I, th I think Osi's going to get beat, but that's just me. <laughs> Probably. He built the deck I'm using. <laughs> Now yeah, but I'm sadistic. I want to give myself a challenge. That'll be fun, man. We can make multiplayer or chain of memories. We can make multiplayer chain of memories the new eSport. But yep. just wait. For, for just five minutes. Just like, wait. If Blizzard can do it with Hearthstone, <laughs> like, we'll make it happen. All I'm just going to say is if I can successfully land a uh, Mega Flare on you, I will feel like I have done everything I can. <laughs> if you land Arse, it'll be even better. So again, oh. he's uh, taking these hits intentionally to get down to critical health. We're going to hope that we can despawn most of this experience here after this is done. This yeah, is going to be close. Quite sketchy. Oh, I almost just tapped it there. All right. Whoa, not dead. What? Oh, yeah. man. Having to dodge all this experience. Yeah, it's actually quite far reaching. <laughs> okay. Don't bounce Don't. towards him. No. <laughs> oh. There All we are. Right, nice. Here, we we're going to check our health, too, because I want to know if we're berserk bugged. 27. That's perfect. Beautiful. So, again, berserk critical health means he's going to do a lot more damage. After Actually, I think 27's the wrong one. Oh, Wait, no, really? No. <laughs> Uh-oh. We're going to have to find out, aren't we? 
Well, he'll find out because he'll be using the Hades enemy card to, uh, you know, kind of do, turn it, Berserk on. Yeah. And then uh, because he'll be in critical health, he'll be doing more damage. Yeah. If it's gets, double the damage, yeah, literally, it'll be so noticeable if it works, and it'll be painfully <laughs> obvious if it that, doesn't. That's <laughs> Shadow Man. <laughs> We could have taken that hit if we wanted to, but I think it's a little too much to do that. All right. So we're going to spawn this Moogle Room here. This Moogle Room is going to put in a lot of work. First thing we're going to do is... Oh, we actually aren't short on Moogle Points. How do we get this many? I was going to say, your Traverse Town had quite a bit. <laughs> All right. Uh, don't worry. We're tired, guys. Yeah. I've been up for a <laughs> long time. <laughs> So buying a bunch of uh, attack Ooh, cards. This there. is sketchy so far, by the way. We're hoping for good value and quality cards, and we're getting Seven, neither. Seven, six, nine. <laughs> okay, that was better. You got a zero at least. We were, we're hoping to avoid Another wishing zero. stars to start out with. Oh, geez. We're getting wow. too many too zeros. Too many zeros at this point, yeah. Eight, All right, five. this is decidedly average. Okay. <laughs> if not slightly below average, <laughs> but we can work with it. Yeah, that's the fun thing with just getting these valued cards, you know. You're just like... Gotta work with what you get. Yeah, yeah. and and he's uh, uh, while he's equipping this, I'll try to explain. Like you definitely get more um, powerful keyblades as you kind of progress through the game. Uh, the, you get more keyblade cards available to you. One, but two, the keyblade cards four. are specifically more powerful whether they're in the first, second, or third part of your combo too. So he's building his his deck to have good quality cards, good value cards, and in the correct order. Yeah. Uh, like, Olymp uh, like the Olympus cards are always better wow. if it's the third hit in the combo. Wow, this barely stretches. This is going to be fun. <laughs> yeah, he's looking at his line of cards here and because he, he wants to, you know, uh, stock these cards together so that their value is over 10. Oh, my yeah. God. Because if it's over 10, then... Uh, this is what I live for in this run, though. <laughs> like, I want, I want to taste victory. Yeah, with a value of 10 or more, um, you know, in his combo, that means he can stock it together as a uh, slight, and an enemy will have to either use a zero or their own slight to be able to p uh, potentially break it. Yeah. Oh, my God, we can make it happen. <laughs> They're all 10s. Jesus. <laughs> Wow. Somehow That's, all 10. I've, I've, I've had to deal with that myself, but with for Fire Agas, and I thought it's never fun, but you can make it work. That so was exciting. beautiful right there. <laughs> so a lot of math you have to do pretty quickly <laughs> while editing uh, those decks. Yeah. It's pretty insane. You, you get really good at figuring out what numbers add up to 10 or more. <laughs> You might not know what adds up to 11, but you know what adds, knows what uh, you know what adds up to 10. Yep, berserk bug. All right, we're gonna take damage uh, from Jafar. It can happen. Uh, it's not too bad when that happens. Unfortunate. It's worse when we notice on Lark scene, for instance. <laughs> right. Yeah, because you know if you're or Oogie, you can't take damage in Oogie. Yeah. Well, if you're trying to take damage from Lark scene, you're getting combo princess to death. Oh. Uh, He's a little low there. Wow, that actually that may be the first time I've seen the platforms not move at all. All right, that was pretty good Jafar fight. Nice. Yeah, yeah. Normally this guy is uh, uh, you do this fight with the intention to just make it so where you're constantly throwing out these uh, stock cards so just so Jafar can't mess with the platforms. Yeah, and he didn't get the level up, which is exactly what he wanted. And I'm putting uh, the cure in this deck though. Yep. Yeah, putting that in, I assume, for safety. And I'm going to see if we can spawn, like, a couple HP balls yeah, to get to... Since he had to take that extra hit, it's just a little yeah, risky. Yeah, 20, 22 yeah. is nice. We can work with that. Yeah. Just but we're going to go straight into Lark scene, and we're going to be on low health for that. And we're going to berserk her straight to death. It's going to be fun. But cutscene! It's really <laughs> important you see this. Yeah. <laughs> that two seconds was, you know... Really rich. All right, here we go. So again, he's a lot of the times waiting for Larkseen to play one of her cards. Ooh, that's Ooh. pretty high damaging right there when that happens. Uh, in order to break Larkseen, so that way he's going to be almost guaranteed to get his combo off. Yeah. Larkseen can still break him back, but there will be a little bit of a period where she can. Oh, man. Oh, man, you're playing it way too risky. <laughs> going all in. Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> 
don't care. And there's the useful usefulness of zero cards, being able to break enemy slights. Oh. Yeah. Got oh, him. Go. Nice <laughs> fight. Very, good. very careful. Like, Larkseen's very dangerous because she doesn't do a lot of damage. I think she's doing one damage in these fights, but she can do it very, very consistently. Mm -hmm. She gets, She's got fast attacks that just are finely tuned to hit Wow, three level ups. Jeez, I guess that's what happens <laughs> when you don't go to Wonderland. Yeah. But um, okay, <laughs> like she'll just poke in there, and she can stun lock you with some of her later attacks. Like the thunders that she was using at the very beginning, the regular Thundara spells, they turn into a dash attack that um, chain combos you and ending in a high damaging thunderbolt. Right. Now th that's one of the most dam dangerous attacks in the entire game. Yeah, now that he has the Thunder Spell unlocked after beating her, now is a prime time to get some, map card, <laughs> uh, some magic cards. Simba! Look at those Genie. summon cards. <laughs> Let's start oh. selling some cards. Yeah, so obviously, need... anything other than Cloud in terms of summon cards is typically really bad. Yeah. Though it'd be hilarious if he got like two decent Cloud cards. Oh, we can sell Dude, one you can of actually these. sell it. <laughs> get out of here, Wishing Stars. And now, um, Ghost Will made a save before this. I assume if things go a bit too rough with the the cards, you might have to reload that save. Yeah, because if he doesn't get enough thunders, or if he doesn't get in, uh, any of this. Really? So we want to get a few fires for Vexen and um, to round out the raid deck, and we want to get two extra thunders for our farming. Yeah. So, yeah, we're just going to be using sa uh, saving quitting to get exactly what we want. So here we go. Pack number you got a two. Fire there. Okay. Genie, Simba, <laughs> Blizzard. Oh. Dumba. All right, we'll open this. If it's good, we'll keep it. Uh, that is good. So we good. will keep it. Um, I'm gonna sell and just buy another pack, like not resetting for it. This is kind of where those judgment calls really come into play too, and just having a huge breadth of knowledge of exactly how many uh, final pack. magic cards you can work with. Way to, wow. sh way to prove me wrong, Tom. <laughs> way to make me waste my time. Wow. <laughs> I love this game. <laughs> All those were useless, just to be perfectly clear about that. <laughs> um, oh, the, we didn't talk about the weird nuance with the Moogle packs that... Um, we didn't find out until like maybe two years ago that completely changed the rest of the route. It was really cool. So basically, the way Moogle Packs work is if you, if you would uh, get a card that you haven't unlocked yet, then it just replaces it with a default card. And for attack cards, that's a kingdom key. For magic cards, it's a cure. And for item cards, it's a regular potion. So like, it's actually more optimal to buy le less expensive packs in a Moogle Room because you have all of the stuff that you're buying for it. So, um, when we bought the attack cards, we knew we were going to get, um, what's it called? A bunch of second level attack cards, like Three Wishes and Olympia and Lady Luck and Pumpkinhead and Wishing Star. And of those, only Wishing Star is really useless. It's too balanced to Keyblade in that it's only slightly better than Kingdom Key in all respects. And we can't min-max it by putting it in certain slots and getting more damage out of it. But here's a good time to explain how, like, you saw on Larkseen, Jafar, we were doing tons and tons of damage with our Berserk combos. Two bars of health is nothing to scoff at. And our old strats used to be throwing raids and, um, just trying to work with clouds and raids um, very, very awkwardly to get to where we need to go. But um, to, to get the damage that we have, we optimize the placement of the Keyblades in the combo. And Lady Luck and Pumpkinhead are good first and second hit Keyblades, so to speak. And Three Wishes and Olympia are good first and combo finisher Keyblades, so to speak. And it's a little more complicated than that, in that, like, the first hit isn't really the first hit, but it corresponds to the animation that's right. usually the first hit. So if you do the combo at a different distance, or you do, like, a jumping combo, then um, you actually reverse the first and second hits of the Keyblade, which can be re very relevant. But now that we have Thundaga strats, we're basically going to go in, farm a bunch of map cards, just get ready for the second world set. And this is by far the most boring part of the run. I'm very sorry <laughs> about that. What that does mean, though, you know, is that you get to what listen I was gonna do to the most entertaining voice of the four. 
and that would be hopefully Spike? someone. Spike? There we go. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> My moment has come. <laughs> well, what I would like to do is just, uh, on top of saying thank you to everyone that's donated so far, is just to remind everybody about uh, the Yeti and how we're working with them this year again to get nine amazing looking t-shirts you can head over to the yeti.com slash rpg limit break and take a look at all the designs pick the ones you want and just know that three dollars from every t-shirt that you guys purchase will be donated to nami remember the yeti is spelled y-e-t-e-e -E -E dot com slash rpg limit break and since you may just be joining us here on uh, RPG Limit Break, we are here supporting NAMI, which is the National Alliance on Mental Illness. Yeah, they are a fantastic charity we've been working with. They they do their, their work through a uh, advocating, they educate people, they lead, and most importantly, and I think this gets overlooked a lot, they listen. So if you need to reach out, please head over to nami.org or use hashtag stigma free on Twitter to tweet or, or tweet directly to NAMI at NAMI Communicate with May being Mental Health Month. It's quite a, a poignant uh, charity to deal with right now. So. But what I do want to do is, I uh, yes, I thought it may. I wanted to check but I'm very not surprised that the law is still winning. <laughs> Unfortunately, your hope of a comeback for bread uh, is looking less and less likely. Come on, people. It's an actual game, by the way. I am bread. That's a game. Yeah, we, <laughs> oh, I'm aware. Yeah, and Takaze said that they will call the uh, I am Satsuna whatever the winner is. So I just want to hear him say, we'll be playing I am bread, except we won't be. <laughs> No, that's all right. Know, Judge man. Dredd references are awesome. I was going to say, the Judge <laughs> Dredd reference is kind of awesome. Yeah, that's true. It's a pretty good one. Now, uh, one thing about his grinding here is you're grinding in Traverse Town specifically for what exact reasons? Uh, Just fab cards. cards. That's all we're doing. Cards. No, I mean, uh, why Traverse Town as opposed um, to some of the because others? Because the enemies are weak enough that they died at Thundaga, basically. Okay. Um, and we have all the blue cards we need. Because the enemies are too easy, they don't give you blue cards, which are generally seen as a reward. They offer treasure, moogle rooms, or save points, stuff like that. Um, you're not getting those rewards farming here. You, you got to take the kid gloves off. But we don't need them anymore. We're just going to clear them out as quick, quickly as we can for your viewing experience. <laughs> we we're kind of hoping to get another Rhapsody here, maybe two for Axel too, just to have insurance against his enemy car that gives him better reaction time. But um, it's not yeah. really a priority here. We're just looking to avoid three spawn encounters like this. We farm in Teamy Darkness here because the like you get eight map cards for your one map card as opposed to five map cards for your one map card. And like, you know, you lose time wasting the ten seconds to farm the card and then use it in the door. So there's a bit of a trade off for whether you wanna spawn more harder rooms or whether you wanna um, play consistently and spawn the lighter Yeah, lighter I don't guys. think we actually mentioned this, the fact that uh, the actual na uh, name of the map card you use to create a room affects geometry. No, we've also talked about this a bit. But we it also talk affects the. But it also ex it affects like how many enemies that spawn, uh, what kind of eff additional effects could potentially the enemies will have. Uh, there's even ones that make it so where your value of your cards are increased by one. Yeah, that's usually not something he's going to be worrying too much about, though. Yeah. But, like, it can get pretty tricky seconds. when we use map cards in, like, other places. And, mm -hmm. again, you were like, you know, you got to memorize all these encounters. And you also kind of have to intuitively memorize which encounters go to which room. So, like, right. you know whether it's okay to fight something there. Especially in 100%, which is the stupidest run ever conceived <laughs> by man. But, like, in 100%, you got to complete the journal. And to complete the journal, you got to get all the enemy cards. And, Oof. you know, these enemy cards are a random drop that can occur when you kill an enemy last. And not only can the random drop be very, very rage-inducing, but killing specific enemy last in the, it's at certain points of the game is um, extremely difficult. Yeah, for example, here he's using these Thundagas, so I think 
theoretically any of those enemies could be the last one. I yeah, think, there's so, right? a, like in t in Tranquil Darkness, actually, the Nocturnes never come up last. But here, there's an encounter where Nocturnes come up last, two where the Rhapsodies come up last, a few where the Soldiers come up last, a few where the Shadows come up last. Yeah, the main thing is is that uh, I don't know what you what would you consider worse, 100 percent or no deck edit percent. I mean, no deck edit is real boring, but it doesn't take nine hours. <laughs> so, okay. like, no deck edit. You, like, if you ever think, man, this speed run's too easy, or like, look at all these strats. These bosses are paper thin. If you never edit your deck at all, like a lot of people do, going through this game, <laughs> and just see how poor the damage of the like, Kingdom Key is, you spend like hours on boss fights. Sometimes they lose, they grind out their whole deck in slights. They're using like two to three cards, and you just you, you can't even worry about it. You're just dealing that poor damage every every chance you get, and then reloading again. I don't know if there's a conceivable run you haven't done with this game yet. Um, I've always been meaning to do a blindfolded run with this game, and I intend to do that, but what? it may take a while. I feel like you'd need something to to call out what the numbers on the cards nah, are. Nah, because like you can, it's it would basically be like a blindfolded no deck edit run, or like I'd uh, memorize a first initial deck edit that would make my my life a little easier, or like come up with ways to test new cards that I got. I don't know if I could sit down and watch you torture yourself. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I'd love it, man. This is the madness that is uh, Chain of Memories <laughs> and Ghost Wheel together. <laughs> I'd do anything for this game, even submit it to marathons for five years. <laughs> well, I mean, you can, you might be able to do something weird and janky, like you put something in your deck, then you get into a battle and you try and use it, and you're like, oh, I put a fire in my deck because I shed it fire. <laughs> One small thing that he's uh, doing here is whenever he clears out the room, he's uh, exiting the room back through the door he came in, and that's so that when he uh, reforms that room, the value needed to open it is the same. Yeah, it's, uh, so it's, it's a bit always of a mental a, shortcut there. Yeah, it's always one or higher that he needs to open that door instead of, like, if he kept progressing, you know, back backwards through the world, he would uh, have to keep using higher and higher map cards. Plus, when you leave, it's faster. Right. There's not really any reason to keep progressing through as if we were doing a normal world. We're getting a lot of value here, which means that, like, farming here is a little more efficient. We have more cards to save, so, yeah. like... I think this is the fourth Team of Darkness I'm in, so it's like two more, and we should be okay. I'm looking at the time, too. Our time with beating Larks was actually pretty good for a run like this. I'm very happy with how things are going. Yeah, Ghost doesn't run with splits. In a game like this, the way because of how the, the uh, routing in it works, you just, why have splits? Yeah. You just, like, at any given time, over different runs, you're going to have different levels of map cards, different decks, and different levels of optimism over how things are going. So it really takes an intuition, like a developed intuition, to figure out whether you're ahead or behind world record. I've surprised myself a couple times. I've had runs that I thought were dead turn out to be records because um, I played really well in the end game or had better RNG than I expected. Well, as we're wrapping up this uh, Team of Darkness, we probably got some time for some more oh, yeah. comments. Yeah, just taking a quick look at the clock, and about we're about halfway through the run at this point, well, through the estimate anyway. I just want to say we're still about $75 away from watching we are gonna OC be get way blocked. under the estimate, by the way. <laughs> Everything that could blow it is. going to go down swinging. <laughs> <laughs> so if you, you want to see that, uh, the, the next competitive eSport. Uh, <laughs> Guaranteed Trump battle. <laughs> I think some people were working on like actually making that work for emulator. So <laughs> fingers one. crossed. The next question is, can we start doing pack openings on YouTube? <laughs> <laughs> and like I said, we've already met the the, re the fight Riku final boss on low, with low HP. We've already met the walk with Winnie the Pooh. That's just the only lo last outstanding thing from Chain of Memories that is yet to be met which is the versus mode battle. So, yeah. Looking forward though, there is the Setsuna stuff coming up. The uh, the final fo the fight final form Samsara uh, has been met. It's at $30 out of 500. There's the naming convention 
There's a, there's a bunch of stuff. So. Got to get working on these incentives, people. Yeah. We know it's late, but, you know, your wallet doesn't know what time it is. So and late, it's practically early. Yeah. <laughs> You're always welcome to donate for Terror, too. We got to back the right horse on this one. <laughs> yeah, I agree. Got to keep happening. I personally say you should just get, uh, get that final fight for, for Ion Setsuna. And, you know, anything to give more airtime for my buddy Freddy. <laughs> And to see him suffer. <laughs> and again, remember, do uh, donations, uh, you, you'll hear us talk a lot about donations and incentives and prizes. Um, <laughs> Good job, Doctor. That, that's just you we voting with your, your wallet. Ideal to, run is right happening in front of you. Yeah. <laughs> just, just voting to, to name characters and stuff like that. All the donations do go to Nami. Don't worry about that. And if you want more information, head down to the, the channel bio below the, the stream and hit the 2017 tracker. But if you do donate more than $25, you do get, do get entered in for the grand prize, which is a Nintendo Switch with the... Well, it should almost be an official bundle at this point, shouldn't it? The, the, legend, <laughs> the legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild. You're Has pretty anybody... much buying it anyway together. Has anyone given one away without the other? I, I highly doubt it. <laughs> Could you imagine? Yeah, I won the Switch. Oh. <laughs> Yeah, so that that stuff that's been out of stock in every store. Yeah, <laughs> get Mario Kart. Twenty five bucks, and you could potentially uh, potentially win it here. Oh, and if you guys have been uh, uh, subscribed to the channel for a while, you'll notice we had a couple of new emotes go live today, which uh, was thanks to one of our longtime artists, LLK. She's been a long time contributor. She designs a bunch of our promo banners and the attendee badges that we're wearing, and just. She's an absolutely brilliant artist. Check out her work over at jazzaboo.com. J-A-Z-A-A-B-O-O.com. Yeah, I like little Vivi and my dad. It's pretty cool. Have you been keeping up with the map cards, OC? Like, have you... Did you uh, feel like you missed something? <laughs> OC's like, nope. <laughs> Admittedly, there is a couple I have missed just because I blink and I miss it. All right. Quite literally. So but I'll do my own count at the end then. I've got I've got a majority. Though. I'll compare it to your count. Yeah, we'll okay. see how it's fine. I'm, like, I'm looking at 183. I'm, all right. Works for me. Um, what, how, many, how many low cards do I have? I'm uh, not talking about the sum here. Not this, uh, how many low cards? Yeah, total? that's the other number. Uh, 12 zeros, 5... No, one, it, there's it, one, one of the numbers subs <laughs> how many low cards the bottom, are. bottom number. The bottom number, 24. <laughs> All right, cool. <laughs> it's a good number. We're going to leave after this Team of Darkness. How does it feel, Hobbs, though, to see me sell off all those Nocturnes? It's got to <laughs> kill you inside. <laughs> I like. It, it's funny, because in Recom, you generally only want two of them, really. Yeah. But if you have a really bad deck, it's it's you know similar with this. Uh, you, you need to be able to bend every which way. If you have a bad fire deck in Recom, you need to uh, have more red Nocturnes in order to make up for it. Uh, and just like in this, if you, you know don't have as many blizzards you hope that you man get i wish something one, else <laughs> one of the practice runs i did um over the course of this week had like the dankest moogle pack pull i've ever seen <laughs> where like we didn't get any blizzards but we got three clouds so in <laughs> axel 2 we were just omni slash <laughs> <laughs> it was pretty glorious oh it was even better when we got to uh was it rika 4 uh, yeah, we got Riku 4. We used Omni Slash. He had no cards in the hole. He was using Incrementer, so he couldn't break it with the zero. But we we used it, and he just put the Dark Fire Aga up within a fraction of a second and <laughs> completely blocked it. <laughs> Ruining our fun. Oh, man. All right, so we're going to go to Hollow Bastion now for a few reasons. The first is because boss HP increases in Maleficent's heart, and the second is because we want Overdrive, her enemy card, or take down the Rikus and uh, some of the future bosses. Yeah, and Overdrive, if I'm not mistaken, is the enemy card that will it's give Berserk you more... It's Berserk Light. Yeah, it'll just give you more damage on all of your attack cards. It's 1.5 times attack damage at the cost of reloading your card slower, which we don't even feel that cost because... Um, we use item cards to help yeah. us out. Yeah, funny how we mentioned the cloud thing. Back, uh, how I don't know exactly how long ago, but one of the old strats of this run was using Omni Slash for the majority <laughs> of the run. Uh, it was usually four cloud cards was the best optimization, along with uh, cards called Slight Lock. Slight Lock lets you uh, use cards in a slight, and the first card doesn't disappear mm -hmm. when you reload. Oh my god, we are running thin on good attack cards to use. Oh, we'll just later. 
Well, if we have a, 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 a decent supply of Moogle Room cards, we can try and get some more packs. Uh, no, because we don't have the points for it. We uh, we burned those points in that last part, remember? No, I mean the free card at the start. Oh, yeah, we can get the free attack packs. So yeah. we have one, two, three, four. So, OC, I want you to know you are going to be getting embarrassed on stream. <laughs> nice. Just had someone we donate $75.22 <laughs> that just says, fight, 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 kiss, kiss, kiss. Awesome. <laughs> and no. that goes ahead and that meets the PvP at the end of the run here. Oh, don't so. worry, folks. I promise you, it's probably more balanced than the current Hearthstone meta. <laughs> All right, we'll take this five over here. And that should be good enough, actually. All right, that was a bit of a slow deck edit, but we kind of had to work with unexpected circumstances. But basically, we need nine boosted raids to take down Maleficent. And um, it's faster to build a raids deck mark, too, because we have more attack cards. Um, okay, we got a lot of those. All right. We don't have enough calm bounties because we didn't go into Wonderland to do, like, um, hardcore Wonderland strats, or hardcore calm bounties here. If you use um, a calm bounty in every single room here, you get four chances at Divine Rose attack cards, which are really, really sweet. They have a first hit damage, which is twice the value of the Lady Lux and the Three Wishes that we've been using up until now. But they're pretty rare. <laughs> yeah, I mean, the best place to find them is in calm bounties in Hollow Bastion, um, where they're natively located. I like Judgment. I'm just digging this, you know, retro chip tune for, <laughs> for Hollow Bastion. Yeah. yeah, it's pretty nice. <laughs> well, you hear, I mean, isn't like Hollow Bastion's theme is like one of the longest themes you hear in the run? It's because just how often you go back there. Uh, kind of, yeah, in the Kingdom Hearts 1 run. So, again, uh, whenever he kind of is opening a lot of these uh, doors that don't really seem to put him in an actual room. There are three story doors per world we could fight for the most this. part. Nah. No, 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 you're not fighting. <laughs> I, it, would, it would trigger Drazerk, though. He says you're never allowed to, to fight any Hollow Bastion counters in Toronto. It's not considered <laughs> a real speed run. But that was actually one of the good ones. <laughs> but yeah, uh, three story doors per world. I'm um, kind of repeating some stuff in case you're joining in midway. And uh, the... Each one of them has different requirements and will give you the key to the next story door. Maybe I should have been using more fives and sixes here. We'll fix that in Atlantica. So, blue card needed for this, and we'll be using it. Don't a use the one blue. Moments for <laughs> I'm doing it very, very carefully. <laughs> <laughs> and then the uh, key to truth for the boss. And just remember if you guys are really digging the, the Kingdom Hearts stuff, this isn't our only Kingdom Hearts game in the marathon. We do have uh, 1.5. And birth by sleep coming up back to back uh, Thursday into Friday, and uh, I do believe that everyone wants to see Terra except the runner. <laughs> so <laughs> I think we should be putting some money towards that at this point. All right, so yeah, nine boosted raids. This fight is free, but if you're not doing this strategy, if you're not completely locking her out, she can get in a lot of free damage in a similar Mandal Arc scene. Um, Dragon Maleficent may be a heartless type boss, which means that she generates cards rather than acting like a human does and using slights and having a deck that can reload. But, you know, that doesn't stop her from busting out sevens and eights that stop you from using physical attacks to any degree of effectiveness. The first real route improvement of this game was when Drazer came up to me like five years ago and showed me those Maleficent strats that <laughs> beat what Aqua Tiger was doing at the time. And it was really cool. Um, her neck acts as a wall there and gives you guaranteed three hit raids no matter what the distance is. So that's um, kind of interesting, I guess. At least she's not swinging her head around like in the, uh, Cage One. She may as well be. Her head is basically warping to you. <laughs> All right. Hi, Riku. Boy, you look really evil today. And uh, you'll see at the bottom it says Overdrive on the left side. That means that he has now used that card we got from Dragon Maleficent that will just increase the damage on all of his attack cards. And, like, a big part of the design of this deck is to... What's it called? Um, you know, meet out the Overdrive. It's 12 attack. You get 30 attacks for it. So we have just enough attack cards in here to take full advantage of that while running through um, them in slights, continually getting rid of the first card here. 
And we use slights for the explicit purpose of keeping the cards in order and making sure that they resolve because they're of value of combined value 10. Um, we do this, and we actually have it so that like six combos, if you use them twice, if you um, get rid of the first card um, in each combo for real, then um, you'll have a third reload of four combos if you use them just right. But the high potion is um, a card we got from Cloud, and it reloads the attack cards that we would normally lose in the slights. So it gives us some extra mileage here. That was a good Rico fight. Yep. Yeah, I mean, those are pretty standard, but yeah, yeah it was good nonetheless. We that Riku, Riku can't <laughs> even use slights. So. Yeah, we fight him four times, so get, he gets harder. <laughs> yeah. Ghost. Yep. Do you know someone called John DeVivo? I do know someone called John DeVivo. Because Ghost Wheelie's dog just donated <laughs> $6 and said, John DeVivo is watching this run. <laughs> All right. Good on him to stay up. <laughs> One of the other cool things now that we have Overdrive and Berserk is uh, you'll start to see those two uh, combined in some of the longer fights. So even if you take some damage during you know, the early parts of the fight, it kind of just helps you stay or get into that Berserk area. Yeah, you get, like, part of the calculus in the later Rikus when he has three bars of health, and we have to worry about that, is, um, you know, we use Overdrive and start taking damage throughout the fight in this almost dance-like fashion, where we get where we hit Flashing Red just as we're done with the Overdrive, and then we start Berserking him. Yeah, because Overdrive does only last for 30 attack cards? Yeah, yeah, 30, 30 attack 30. cards. Which is like a reload and a half of our deck. Right. Now, I notice you're not using the basic potion anymore when uh, you're reloading your deck now, right? You're yeah, because it, do it doesn't give you the cards you got back you lost in slights. Right. So... Yeah. So getting those those back, and you also still get premium cards back too, right? Which yeah. potentially matter a little bit. I mean, we could get we could extend the life of this deck by like buying more high potions for removal packs, but we do we have neither the need nor the points to to take those kind of strats. We'll just take the mega potion from Riku three when he gives it to us, or yeah, I think it's Riku three. It's one of those guys. You so, use the elixir you get from Boo. That's true. And we used to back when we had um, more slight focused boss strats. That was one of those rooms where uh, the door was kind of hiding behind. The door was <laughs> hiding, and so was the Heartless, you know. That was cool. <laughs> it was a weird confluence there. All right, so Ursula, we're also going to berserk, and it's going to be quite scary. So keep your eyes peeled. Since I was asked to give a quick update, I will. Right now, the character Bid Wolf of Birth by Sleep stands at. Terra at $160, Aqua at $55, and Ventus lagging in third place with $35. Oh, well, Ventus should be at least in second, and I know he wants it higher than Terra for sure. But, I mean, that being said, keep doing it for Terra. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> now we're going to hit her face and the next tentacle at the same time. It's really cool. When you hit her face, she'll use the... Oh, it doesn't matter. We got the trick card. Cool. But she'll <laughs> use um, an, uh, an attack card to slap her tentacle up at you, and that makes Berserk Strats very dangerous most of the time. I always found this fight really weird. But you stocking just... them like this is um, very, very useful if we do it in this manner. She, like, wanders off all the time off screen. It's, like, really annoying. Yeah. There we go. Look at that health bar, man. But yeah, like, isn't this run so cool how you can just casually be on low health and be totally okay because you have card control? I don't know. <laughs> I love it. That is the kind of thing that takes a lot of experience of playing the game and understanding how the combat system works to yeah. be able to be sure that you're not going to just that get randomly killed. Yeah. Though it can still happen in some of the later fights. Yeah, I mean... It's, he's literally always like one card break away from just getting murdered. Yeah. And to quote chat, that beeping is absolutely not annoying at all. No. Nope. So now Riku's picked up a new trick. It's called Dark Fire Raga. It's very easy to dodge. It's not very um, yeah. much of a threat. Unfortunately, dodge rolling in this game is because it's on the Game Boy Advance, and there's only so many buttons on it. You have to double tap left or right in order to activate dodge roll. So it's a bit tricky to pull off the timing sometimes. Um, Riku 3, as far as I can tell, is not discernibly different from Riku 2, but Riku 4 um, gains a special set of tricks. 
Matrix. Um, he gets Dark Aura, which is basically an instant kill if it's allowed to resolve, so you got to keep zeros in the hole for that. But that's not even the important part. The really important part for Riku 4 is his third bar of health, which makes this strat not viable. And that is one of those fights we'll be getting into Berserk on after Overdrive, right? Yeah. Yeah. So leveling up the HP a little bit more now. Just yeah, to, uh, we want to get to 170 yeah. before Riku 4. That's the dance I kind of like to play on, a per like, personally. Yeah, it's one of those catch-22s where you don't want your HP to be too low because you still want to, you know, be a little bit safe, and you don't want it to be too high because you want to be able to get into Berserk range fairly quickly. And you'll notice we're never leveling up slates. Uh, the problem is, is with slates is, is that... You have to. Uh, uh, you always they're fixed start damage no matter what yeah. the attack cards that yeah. compose them are. So yeah. even if you have Ultima weapons making up your sliding dash, it's like still an early game slight, so it doesn't really do much for you. And they're all pretty crappy anyway. <laughs> Just a, a quick request, since we've had some people tune in a little bit late and a lot sure. of people are wondering why OC is holding a calculator. Um, he's <laughs> just keeping track of the map cards I've been collecting over the course of the run. Or um, so we think he is. I mean, <laughs> I don't really need such assistance until the very end of the game, but um, yeah. it's very nice to have it if, if he can continue to keep his focus throughout. <laughs> I, I'm burning through these really quickly yeah, here. Yeah, he is, actually. <laughs> it's it's, it's it's usually the most difficult to actually keep up when you get to a door and it's requiring like multiple cards. To yeah, I just I just spam them without thinking. How? You know. What? <laughs> How did you hit that red nocturne? No, these hitboxes in the overworld <laughs> are <insane>. janky. <laughs> I mean, like right there, that was a four, so minus four. Um, I thought you were gonna hit the shadow on the opposite side of the room. <laughs> it's it's kind of an interesting experience. Uh, usually, it's kind of like I'm looking at him. Okay, he burned through them so quickly, so he probably did some mul uh, multiplier thing, like like if it was thirty. Oh, he must have used like f five sixes. I'll do this. It's a slower room, but it's not as slow as the Sleeping Darkness. I got a twenty dollar donation from Aeon Frodo saying. This is an awesome run so far, Ghost. I played GBA Com when I was much. So <laughs> Love this game. <laughs> Continue, sorry. No, no, no. I was. Uh, played GBA Com so much when I was a kid. It's great to see the speed run shown off in a marathon. Good luck for the rest of the run. My donation is going towards the Xenoblade Chronicles English voice acting because I'm really feeling it, and that actually uh, kind of broke uh, in uh, the English voice acting ahead. It is now $5 ahead. English is on $55 and Japanese is on $50. So if you're a fan of the Japanese voice acting, you're going to be down about 5 bucks right now. I, I can't believe you dodged every enemy in that room and the last one decided to troll you. <laughs> we, you know, there's nothing you can do about it if he just decides yeah. to park his butt in oh, front of the door. Oh, come on. Nocturne, really? <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's a one. Nice. Give me a sleeping yeah, That thing. one equals that it showed up there pretty obviously. Just I'm means confident my. Um, you have to. Use I, I'm confident I changed the deck here, by the way, to the raids deck. Oh, yeah. Yeah. All right. Hook is mean, but Hook is. Um, in, unlike in KH1, we actually like Hook's ship here because it tilts him down into four and five hits raids, as it just did right there. And is he weak to fire? He is weak to fire in addition to um, being weak to boosted raids as a general statement. Oof. Oh, but the he has all zeros out, <laughs> so we have the Parasite Cage in our deck to deal with that. Breaking those enemy cards, getting that niche Utah there. Yeah. Breaking the combo and presence important here. Stop dancing around. Yeah, he's, yeah, he's kind of trolling me at the jerk. end here, but <laughs> this is kind of an average hook fight. He can be a lot worse if he um, starts jumping in your face all the time. There's like a weird distance you have to be for him to jump further away from you as opposed to closer than you. Um, that was still more interesting than the three Firagas it would have been in Recon. <laughs> but yeah, uh, does Hook ship tilt in Recon? I no, forget. No, no. Nothing happens in that fight. You just walk <laughs> up and press triangle, man. And in Recon, the raids don't even work the way you want them to because <laughs> they just they just hit, a, hit once and then they never take the damage from it on the backswing even. Yeah. What's even the point? All right, so you donated for it. Let's see it. Um... 
There we Winnie go, the Pooh then. is, you know, absent-minded, and he's even more forgetful in this game because of the plot. He's incapable of doing anything on his own, including eating, and he's got to be coddled all the way to the end of this stage. Come this on. is Press R the game. And while <laughs> it's better than any Winnie the Pooh minigame in any of the other KH games, <laughs> it's still quite <laughs> debatable. <laughs> Okay, poo. No, don't go for the honey. Poo. No, it's almost better to get him to the honey, <laughs> just so that he gets it over with. He's gonna be fighting me on this the whole way if he doesn't get to drink it. <laughs> you ready to go now, Pooh? <laughs> the only thing you can do in this game is press R to, you know, change the direction he feels like going. Dude, come on. For the record, he could be blowing by all this. You people donated. We for could this. we could have abandoned him. We could have left him to die. But <laughs> so he's just sitting there like you did this to me. <laughs> you saved the animals. Yeah, this is the equivalent of you could teach Pooh to uh, you could give Pooh honey, but you can't teach Pooh to get his own honey because he'll forget it eventually. Eventually, that's a stretch. All right, got some balloons here. <laughs> We're gonna get balloons right. We're gonna get the chain balloons right here, <laughs> the prime strats. Uh, uh, you know, oh, go ahead. Fine, you fine. can take this one, Pooh. You also, when you get these Moogle points, they're like the laggiest Moogle points in the whole <laughs> game. I don't know why this happens, but <laughs> even when you're just running through, you can't help but go through these Moogle points. All right, chain balloons. Yeah, he, you can't screw up balloons, Pooh. You, they're riding for you. Yeah, go ahead, get them. <laughs> <laughs> you can also hit these flowers and get more Moogle points. These aren't four Moogle points like the usual small ones, though. These are just one apiece. <laughs> oh, jeez. 100 um, acre wood. He's got to think about something, though. He's real pensive. <laughs> Come on, dude. You can make it. And for the 100% run, and as a kid, like, you know, you want to complete the journal. You have to complete a lot of these little side quests for Pooh. And you see Tigger doing this. You got to go, like, jump on these four stumps in exactly the way Tigger's doing. And I just didn't even have any confidence as a kid that I could get Pooh to sit on one of these stumps and actually jump from one to the next. Are you stuck? Yeah, I think he was <laughs> stuck for a little bit. Get out of there, Pooh, you know. The world's this way. What a speed run, dude. <laughs> Get it, you know, look at these. These are butterflies. <laughs> I can't believe the holes are faster. It's just you know, something I never would have believed as a kid. No, we can get him away from this, honey. We're far enough. Come on, Pooh. Yo. Fight the power. You can quit. <laughs> <laughs> but but he doesn't care at all about yours. <laughs> nope. But yeah, you can do all these and, like, there's one slight in this game that's so impossible to figure out as a kid, and even GameFAQs didn't have a good explanation. It's like, you have to get Rabbit to talk to you, and for that to happen, and for you to get the Synchro Slight, you have to get into his wagon at the beginning of the stage, get all of these little twigs down um, with your Keyblade. Actually, he eat, probably eat, needs to eat the eat, honey. dude. <laughs> You're dying. What? Eat no. it. <laughs> <laughs> But um, after that, if you do both of those things and you stand in a very, very precise spot on the field, cabbages will start rolling down and you'll have to whack them with your keyblade, putting them into a little pile on the side. You have to keep doing this until you get 11 cabbages and then Rabbit will thank you and give you the synchro slate. Um, this slate um, sets every enemy's HP to um, the HP value of the guy you're targeting, which is really, really cool. And I was like, man, we can do this in the speed run. We can set like Marluxia uh, 2's HP to the HP of his flowers, or Maleficent's HP to the HP of the little fire she spawns. But nah, it doesn't work. They're guarded against it. It's just it's so anticlimactic. This game has cloud oh strife. We're here. Yeah, we're We've here. Who's at the end? We're done. <laughs> I hope Ooh. that was. A <laughs> Thank you for We donating. even got Bambi for our trouble. <laughs> wow. All right, let's enjoy the best. Did you buff. even get the elixir? You no, just I, I blew <laughs> by it. <laughs> nope. Okay, so we have, I think, four so fires, so we are kind of... We got to stand the proper Damn. distance. This guy laughs like a chick. We, you know, I, the reason I don't throw these right away because he can move anytime he wants. He's very lazy about it and very deliberate. But if you break him, then it's no problem. All right, we should be good as long as he doesn't troll me real hard. Oh, uh -oh. all right. Okay. We got two five hit rates, so we're good. Vex and one can go poorly if the wrong things happen. That was a very nice fight in my opinion. 
Yeah, because again, once he used that last fire raid, he would have had... I had uh, no damage left yeah, in the deck. <laughs> he would have had everything stocked up for blizzard raids, uh, so he would have had to kind of pick out his keyblades, and on top of that, I think you have to break the shield if you do it that way. You have to get behind him. You, you don't break a shield. Okay. Like, the shield is imper impervious to everything. All right. Um, and, like, you may think, man, why do you even, like, slowly get those fires in the Moogle Room and um, do that strat for Vexen? Can't, isn't it, like, a little faster to try and do a slower strat for Vexen and skip all that Moogle Room resetting? I might agree, except for the fact that we have a second Vexen fight coming right up here. Um, and also, the fires help us out against Maleficent and stuff. Mm -hmm. And because you got, like, five red Nocturne drops, so why not? <laughs> We don't even use them, man. I know, but you got them. Mm, this looks like it could be sequel bait. Yeah, I mean, so normally you have three plot doors, but in this world specifically, you get only one because the organization is trying to cover this up. You've seen too much if you go to Twilight Town. <laughs> yeah, Twilight Town. I don't even uh, know what I used there. <laughs> yeah, I didn't even <laughs> see what you used either. I think it was a three or a it two. It looked like a two. two, yeah. Yeah, okay. Good job, Hobbs. Those are some sharp eyes. It yeah, was a two it was or a, a three. Two. Uh, it was yeah. a two because you it can was the see third that. Slot. Yeah. Yeah. Now you say sequel bait. This came out before Kingdom Hearts two. It or did. After? Yes. yes. It came before Kingdom Hearts. It was the teaser. Yeah. The Kingdom Hearts two makes a little more sense if you play this one first. And I say a little. Little. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, this game is meant to Metroid your Kingdom Hearts series. It like they literally designed it so that <laughs> you lose you lose all your memories, you lose all your skills, and can start Kingdom Hearts two with no abilities. Yep. <laughs> all so right. had to use one above five, one below five, and a blue card there that can't be the blue one. <laughs> <laughs> very very <laughs> careful. I got five dollars from Cosmic the Dolphin. He says, unlike hey. Aeon, I never beat this game as a kid. I had insufficient patience. Good, jo got, good job, Ghost, on being more patient than I. See everybody on Tuesday. We can be more aggressive on this Vexen because we have the second reload. Um, the first Vexen gave us Mega Ether, which lets us get our lost magic cards and slides back. A couple of four hits and a five hit rate so far. Uh, so Ice Burn is kind of annoying because... Um, like if the ground if the ground is like ice in places where you would optimally raid, you kinda have to make him go different places or just break the ice burn. But that was pretty sweet. Pretty solid. He didn't get he didn't have to use auto life there either, which gives him HP for like one or two more raids. But we packed the parasite cage for that too. One fifty. That ain't bad. Never forget Riku three. Um this boss can kinda jump you. You were using the same deck against Vex and um, and hook for a little while, and then you come out and it's Riku 3 again. Forgetting to switch decks is one of the easiest things to do in uh, these runs because you start to get so caught up in all your map cards and everything, and then suddenly you have the wrong deck on. Yeah, most casual players will often make like, like this is my heartless fighting deck through, and this is my boss fight deck. Um, you may see me jumping in Riku and such. Um, this is so that I can preserve combo order. I was talking about how like the damage of the combo, uh, the, the piece of the combo is dependent on like the animation and not the actual, um, like whether it's first or second hit of the strike, etc. Um, if you jump, you preserve animation order. Riku's really annoying when he tries to reload. This is actually pretty low damage for right now. We've missed a lot um, running it into his slights and just whiffing in the air. This was a bit risky, too. We'll be fine. We've got a reload or two left in us. You get to see what happens when I go to the last card. You have to make a little adjustment where I do this. Yeah, and that was because he didn't get those slight cards. Uh, the cards that were at the beginning of the slights back. Not this time, at least. Nice. Okay. All right. Good job. Good fight. And now, uh, assuming it's the same as Recom, the any of those bosses that you fight multiple times, the you know later ones that you fight end up getting more zero cards and. Uh, oh yeah, and their decks get better. Slights a lot more. Like stuff, Riku so. three probably has a better deck than uh, Riku two, but he doesn't have any new techniques and he doesn't have another health bar, so I don't really consider him very distinct. Mm -hmm. Riku four on the other hand. Yeah, Riku All four right. and Lark scene two have a lot of zeros. So OC's lost a bit of count, so I'm gonna do my own count. I gotta make sure. 
Three, five, four, five, six, seven, eight, 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 eight. Speaking of, I've got a $25 donation from Glam Frost. It says, I'm glad we've got math percent going 15, on. 16, since Final 15. Fantasy Tactics is no math this time. Um, I had 19 seven, over 21, here. 21, 828, 37, um, 51, 58, 82, 91, um, 99. Okay. We're Masters pretty good. in mathematics, everybody. <laughs> yeah. So I'm about a little 20 over because I, whenever I wasn't sure to take away from something, I just left it as is. You should see 15 low cards and 99-ish uh, value of, of high cards. I got 12 low cards. And what about high cards? Am I, I right? Uh, 119. Okay. So maybe you didn't remove as many as you should have because I still think I'm right here. We're looking for about 20 low cards and about 150 value of map cards to go into the end game here. And we just got another one right there. So, um, yeah, we're just going to keep track of this. This is the last grind session of the game. Then we're going to blaze through the final boss gauntlets, and it's going to be epic. Um, so that's 104. What the, and the metric I do is I like... I add up the low cards and I add up the values of the high cards just to <laughs> be a little more efficient. There it is. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we could have used that earlier. No, actually, we couldn't have. This is no? exactly the time. Oh, okay. It's yeah. just in time yeah. here. I meant more of getting it earlier, yeah. <laughs> just to not have to worry about it. Nah. Nah, just. We're good. Well, this is perfect timing for it. 111? Yep. So the Xenoblade Chronicles English voice acting is pulling away slightly after a $25 donation from Magna, saying keep up the good work and donating towards the Xenoblade with English voice acting because rain times are good times. And that makes Xenoblade Chronicles with the English voice acting being at $80 as opposed to the Japanese at $50. And I have D wins donating $13 hey. saying card games for Nami. And they put their $13 towards level one critical fight no heart at level one. So that will be happening during Birth by Sleep. 121. D wins is uh, um, probably the most uh, prolific uh, recon runner. And I believe has he done some GBA con? Um, I runs? think I don't think so. Okay. Uh, not to my recollection. But we've talked a lot about our Ecom. He's a good guy. Yeah, I should have mentioned him in my shout out earlier, along <laughs> with the other Ecom runners. But you know, shout outs to D Wins, good, great dude right there. Oh, and Blade Shard, he was running Riku for a while. Oh yeah, he was uh, actually working on a TAS. Because there actually is a task of this game, although I don't think it's like quite optimal or anything like that. No, there but, it, it oh. is pretty much. I I okay. routed it. Okay, like, it's uh, I didn't know if it had changed or something. Yeah, but it, one of the best things I think of watching the tasks of this game is watching the deck editing, uh, watching oh, all just, the menuing it because it is insane. Go, uh, you can find it on YouTube. Just search for the uh, TAS. For I think we're out. Memories. I thought we were at 131, but that's what I'm going to keep it at. I'm going to listen to the math major. <laughs> I just saw back-to-back -back five. Because I haven't been keeping track at all. I'm 137. Useless. We're getting a lot of the high cards we need, which I didn't expect. Like, you can definitely lose out on these. We may only need, like, one more Teaming Darkness to move out to the end. Uh, yeah, I mean the end. Holy crap. And that, that's the one thing about the... When we get to the end, we reach 16. the final boss gauntlet. That's some of the toughest fights in this game, and it really just goes to show how risky and how optimized uh, Ghost Wheel's deck is. A lot of Berserk strats in the end. And oh, that's cool. A lot of being very close to dying. Oh, uh, so close to dying. Love you, Dor. <laughs> Work exactly when I want to. It, it's, it's what makes this game really tense. Because, like, for the most part, he's not always, like, looking at the enemy. He's looking at the top of the screen where the uh, where the uh, stock card totals yeah, are Yeah, I'm visibly. looking at their slight cards. I'm looking at my cards. I'm looking at their cards. I'm looking at the card in the middle, you know. Yeah, that's and, actually how and, this uh, game kind of fools you casually. Is mm -hmm. you, you really don't really want to look much at the enemy. You want to look at everything else on the screen. The movement screen. is basically instinctual. You know, yeah. you feel it in the back of your eye. Yeah, it's just a lot to, you know, uptake in and think on the fly. Yeah. So if you want to end up going back to this game casually, 
look at the numbers and just be ready to, you know, break any amount. Oh, I need a little more because that one of my combat, the combat I'm going to use in Destiny Islands is a high value, so it doesn't get to go to the other doors. But this should be fine. This, there's no way I don't uh, get enough after this teaming. All right, yeah, it's for, you want to use it because you want uh, judgment. Yes, judgment. And what is judgment? Uh, judgment's basically arrow raid, um, and instead of doing like a wind effect and you toss it out in the same way, it's like a homing attack. But it has weird properties that we used to abuse a lot more in the old route, but um, it still gets some play against Dark Side today. It basically homes in, and it goes away after it's traveled a certain distance, but it like has the um, disposition to want to move into figure eight all the time and only hit people four times. So like if you get below them and you knock them in just the right way, you can hit them in this oval fashion where the ju judgment keeps chasing them. We call it the judgment glitch. You hit them eight times. And on dark side in particular, judgment just goes straight at the face. It gets caught in the corner and hits them eight times. And judgment uh, uh, at dark side being just a really tall boss in general. Gotta have more enemy cards <laughs> to finish it out. Like, the, the main thing about Dark Side that sucks so much is how much health he has and how stupid his pattern is. He doesn't really have any weaknesses either, and his head's just kind of up there. It's really just a boring slugfest, and it's even worse than Riku. Actually, no, it's not that much worse than Riku because they lower his health, but it's still pretty bad. Even the developers understand this. This is dumb. Let's make like, it a little easier for you. It's a metaphorical fight anyway. Should have replaced it with Zexion. Just cut the cord. <laughs> That's a way to put it. Well, we're almost done with the grinding here if you want to get any uh, last few plugs in or anything. Yeah, like we're that. gonna be talking yeah, a lot no after problem. this. Problem. Um, just we get, we've got a do donation that's come in for the English voice acting in Xenoblade Chronicles. Another anonymous twenty-five dollars just says, "I'm really feeling RPG limit break." We're yeah. feeling you too. Anonymous. We're feeling you too. <laughs> so yeah, the the English voice acting is over double Japanese right now. So if you Japanese fans out there, you gotta get your get your skates on. I don't think we have enough low cards, so I'm gonna do this just to be real safe. Continue. Yeah, I just I, if you guys wanna just get a catch up on the Setsuna uh, name. It's still I am the law. Yep. Mm -hmm. yeah. And uh, we are still quite a ways away from fighting the final form of Samsara. We're still at $30 out of 500 there. So if you want to start donating towards that for the. Because I am set soon as the very next run after Kingdom Hearts. So let's get some support in for those guys as we pass it along. I am the law. I wonder what you were doing there for a second. <laughs> All right, so we're done with the grind. Yeah, my my Stallone's not very good. <laughs> but... Oh, I thought it was OC. <laughs> <laughs> I just want to hear freaking Takazi try to do that voice. <laughs> I think we all do, actually. <laughs> Another thing that can get beginner runners of this game is this next plot door coming up, where you need a two equals and an eight equals. The twos and eights are both five percent to find, and you know, it's you just if you them. if you miss it, you live with that for the for the rest of your run. You know, you got you you have to go back and find them. You just you hang your head in shame when you make a mistake like that, because there's so much in this game that's out of your control that when you lose to something that's in your control, you. Well, to be fair, it's not like a casual first-time player is going to be like know what doors mm -hmm. is going to come up. No, but I'm talking about speedrunners. You yeah. know, like if you're a first-time speedrunner. All right, all right. They fixed a lot of things in Recom with uh, you know making it easier to get a lot of different values and stuff. Uh, but they also you know took away a lot of the varied gameplay, which was very unfortunate. Yeah, it's just the stuff that's that. Uh, that they've made specifically to make it work on the GBA versus literally taking the KH1 engine and applying the uh, uh, chain of uh, memories rule set. I don't know. It's pretty easy to have a Zen philosophy when it comes to RNG because if it weren't this, it'd be something else, right? If it were like, if I got everything I wanted right now, then I'd be going for everything I like was greedy for in another life. Mm -hmm. So you can't really take it too hard. 
I can put the calculator down, by the way. Yes. Yes, you can. <laughs> I'm going to practice for our multiplayer. I'm glad we ran into this <laughs> encounter because I'm so tired. I would have actually, I would have forgotten to change decks before. I am not if going to happened. lose that easily. <laughs> I guess uh, since we are running into this, you know, kind of boss rush real quick. Uh, this is going to be very awkward. Um, we need to make sure that we don't have ones or premium cards in our first couple combos. That's starting to get to be real <laughs> tight. <laughs> Why is that exactly? Because our uh, pull in the first part of the run was pretty bad. No, why Why do you not want the ones? Because we want to use combos consistently against Dark Side, and we're not sliding them, and we're not using high potions to help ah. us. Uh, we don't even get to use that to help, so we're just going to deal with this awkwardness. What do I even have to work with? Yeah, I think it's worth kind of bringing up in case you came in halfway through the run or something. Uh, watch for... Uh, in all of these last final bosses, the way the combat works in this game, your enemy plays a card, you play a card, but there can only be one card on the field at a time, and uh, you play your cards in real time. So if your enemy played a card first and you play a card of higher value, you break them. If uh, you played one and they play one of higher value, they break you, and a break uh, introduces a small stun and uh, gives you the uh, you know opportunity to hit your enemy. So he'll be doing that kind of thing a lot, and he'll also be getting into low health to do extra damage via the uh, Berserk ability. Yeah. The yeah. other thing he wants to try to avoid, too, is if the two cards clash on their exact same uh, value, they just neutralize each other and your card's wasted. Yeah. All right, so here we're employing the patented overdrive into Berserk strategy, where we hit him with every single one of our combos in overdrive, and then hit him in Berserk yeah. after taking enough damage. You'll see that he's charging up that, um, you know, his deck reload. Not all the way, but uh, most of the way you know, a lot of the time here. And that's just so that uh, he's doing that when he has more downtime. So that way when he does want to reload it, it's an instant charge. We're going to take damage from the hand here. We need it. Talk to the hand, baby. <laughs> uh, this is a little awkward. We're not going to as much as we want. Okay. Three well, more cards left We need more overdrive. berserk. Give me the two balls. Yeah, two balls. <laughs> <laughs> so now he's going to finish out that overdrive and uh, go into Berserk right now. Gives him 30 attack cards in Berserk, which are going to deal a lot more damage. And hopefully to Dark Side and not the Shadows. <laughs> yeah, that was rude. But now, obviously, you can see with the health in the top left, he's got Dark to Side's real got a fixed on. pattern, by the way. We know exactly what's going to happen, which is why, what makes this fight so boring. He'll first, you know, he'll throw the balls, he'll punch the ground, he'll throw more balls, he'll punch the ground again. But this time, it's, you know, you can deal damage to him. And again, using those zeros to break Dark Side to stop the attack he's trying to use to push him into a different one. All right, eight tier is pretty good. Okay. Whoa, we don't have judgment. Okay. Oh, oh yeah, you didn't actually use the <laughs> calm down, did you? No, we didn't. That's awkward. It's going to get weird. Well, I guess we're just going to have to hack at him. Yes, yeah, so doing a lot less damage now because he doesn't have Berserk anymore after using the 30 attack cards. Well, that's the first major mistake of the run. I'll take it. If you're going to make one that's, you know, <laughs> certainly not near as bad as doing something like using the one blue. Right. There we go. Bought it out there in the end. It's not that big a deal, but it it does. It's nice enough that it's worth you know saving the calm bounty for, um, and getting judgment. But I'm gonna need serious time for these next couple of fights because they're gonna be really awesome. <laughs> and then uh, you don't need judgment anymore, right? No. Okay. So we're not gonna go back and get it. Mm -hmm. That means you got one more high value. That you weren't yeah, that's that's true. Real important that we see this cut. Yeah, real important. <laughs> yep. We're breaking free of the spell, but we still kind of believe anyway because we're dumb. That's He's the story a kid. of this game. Give him a break. 
<laughs> I don't care if they're fake memories. They're my memories. <laughs> All right, I'm ready to lose horribly to you. <laughs> I'll get one more donation in while you're setting up. Is that good? Yep. All right. I have $10 from Sonic Shadow Silver 2252 who says, Hey, everyone, I'm really feeling this Deathless run so far. Oh, famous last words. <laughs> um, <laughs> after all, the Heartless and Organization 13 are a bunch of jokers. Good luck with the run, Ghost Wheel. Thank you, Sonic Shadow Silver. All right. So this is the gun. Uh, this is comprised of... Riku 4, which Riku 4, this is when the game just jerk. kind of just says, all right, training wheels are off. Let me show you how it's done, kid. Oh my god, yeah. we're getting stun locked. This you, is not usual. You want to take damage in this fight, but not this much this quickly. Oh no. Ooh. It's okay. Jeez. I believe. Okay. He's going to basically have to do the rest of this without getting hit, I think. Pretty yeah, much. Yeah, that's it. pretty much right. Yep. Yep. Ooh. Okay. That was uh, Dark Aura there, so really uh, the biggest move that you have that to watch out for. That dodge was well taken. Oh, tie. wow, the tie. Tie and, slight, uh, and slights is actually pretty... Uh, you don't see it often. Definitely would die for many of these Dark Faragas if you weren't dodging them. I die for many things. Yeah. No! no! Oh, we, <laughs> couldn't, we couldn't do anything about that. I'm, I'm sad, but it wasn't even my fault. All right. <laughs> <laughs> like seriously, thanks, Sonic. <laughs> <laughs> that was very close, though. That was yeah, awesome getting to watch the uh, kind of the adaptations you had to make there. And now, hopefully, we'll see the perfect fight because that's how Kingdom Hearts runs normally go. See, when you get, when you actually look at that top card, you get to see it before it comes down here and becomes difficult to add. So I knew that twelve was bigger than that eleven. And he's got seven, and he's going to try and do Dark Aura, in which case he can easily break. Should have, could have taken Berserk here. I didn't do that on his Dark Aura here. Yeah, this is the move that you normally want to definitely avoid, but very advantageous for getting into crit health. All right. Yeah, you can just see just how much more damage uh, the Zerg strats end up doing, but it's just so risky. I see him there, we go. There. there we go. There we go. I was a little worried he might try to zero you out right at the end. No, that was a dark aura he was stalking, okay. so yeah. we're okay. We're going to take HP, though, All right. going to Lark's. Man, this deck is so bad for this call. <laughs> <laughs> it's really scary when you have to run with a deck like this. Yeah, knowing that you're going to have to cancel almost every slight with a zero <laughs> <laughs> instead of being able to actually use some of your own. Not always fun. We're going to start with Riku's enemy card, Slight Lock. Basically, just let me get a little more, a few more combos in. This has a dampening effect that lets me time when Larkseen goes to lower than half health um, so that I have overdrive for longer, and that phase of her fight is less problematic. Yeah, Larkseen is, like, evil. Evil. She's incredibly fast. She has a lot of attacks that just chain in the other attacks. And a lot of zeros, too, to be able to block you pretty... Or, uh, and teleport rush, you, you know. Easily. She got a new trick. Now she starts using Lightning Bolt, we're gonna have to dodge roll that and start zeroing teleport rushes. It's a good thing to break. Thirteen cards left in overdrive means that he's going to want to be getting into crit health pretty soon. Oh, uh, please. Goofy, just get in there, Goofy. <laughs> Goofy tried. 
Alright. Now he's gonna try and set up some berserk here. And, uh, crit health there, but. Yep, there we go. Okay. It's a bit worried it might have been the <laughs> berserk cloak. Yeah, you don't get that on this health usually. Okay. That was a lot of damage though. Ooh. Oh god. Luck oh god. Scene is a tough one. Yeah, it's just card break oh, after goodness. card break after card break. Yeah, I knew that oh. was gonna kill. Oh. Stupid gauntlet. Thanks again, Sonic. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we're fine. We're fine. Yeah, these last fights are brutal. Especially just due to the nature of not going low on health until the end of the fight. Means they're generally a big time loss if they it, decide to be jerks. It doesn't help that the value of his cards is just really low on yeah. average. We play around this and we try to be good enough that it works out for us most of the time. But uh, can't win them all. This is also, of course, like where the combat mechanics become a lot more punishing if you haven't learned them throughout the run. So this is totally what sets a runner like Ghost Wheel away, uh, away from someone who might not be as familiar like, with the run. Yeah, I don't think anybody currently comes close to Ghost, level, uh, ghost skill level. Believe. Did you throw that potion with nothing? No, I uh, I threw it with two cards in the hole on Larxene's end. Okay. That was the scary part. Uh, okay. Alright. Nearly there. He's not even going berserk yet because he knows he's going to probably take some enough damage here. And he got a lot of good damage in this time. Alright. In the uh, earlier phases. Wow. We... Hit me. We're gonna end this in Berserk. <laughs> oh, not quite Berserk. Hit him one more time. But don't kill. <laughs> we don't want that. There we go. Oh. <laughs> All no. The no. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. We're in this. We're gonna end this right. <laughs> With a horrendous beeping noise. I mean, wonderful <laughs> beeping noise. <laughs> yeah, Larkscene, uh, Rik Riku Four and Larkscene Two are some of the most tricky fights in the run. Would you say that they're the trickiest? They're the or worst. Still, yeah. Marluxia. Okay. Larkscene specifically is the worst. Yeah. This is the fights that, that you I typically see. Ghost practicing the most right before mm -hmm. he does a full run because it, it is the worst feeling in the world to like go through all the map card grinding, getting the one blue, getting everything you need, and just dying at the very end of the yeah. gauntlet. All right, um, I guess we can put the fifth blizzard in, it's dicey, but we can take care of this. Actually, take care of most of this. And add in... Remember, you don't have judgment. Isn't that still a judgment slate? Or something? No, no. We no, don't okay. care. Okay. Um, the other Rhapsodies. Oh, all right. He's getting ready to fight Axel, too. Hence, the Blizzards. Yeah. And just like before, Axel is weak to ice spells. But first, we gotta move through Castle Oblivion. Yep. Oh boy, you got Trinity Limit. <laughs> and you know, maybe we'll use it on the final boss, maybe we won't. Depends on how um, Rudy's feeling that day. And uh, if it's like uh, Recom, then this is actually the biggest world in terms of. Like, no, the yeah, rooms we got go a through. lot of you have stuff to go through. To chew, a, here, chew through right here. 14 rooms? Yeah, um, that's right. Yeah, so. <laughs> We're, we got to do a lot of running and uh, having to, yeah, <laughs> avoid enemies here, and specifically trying to use cards that are going to be small. And a couple cutscenes along the way, for good measure. Well, it is a Kingdom Hearts game. <laughs>
Yeah, we saved all our zeros for this moment, basically, because if we have enough zeros, we can keep chaining low cards without having to go all the way up to nine. It's very, very useful. Uh, it's really nice when you get so many zeros that you can just spam zeros sometimes. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Good feeling. It's always proper to leave, like, one zero at the end, though, yeah. so that you can um, finish the game no matter what happens. Definitely. And we're also coming up really soon on everybody's favorite door. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> Best door in the game right here. Unquestionable. Um, actually, yeah, we don't have a lot of these little cards. We have don't. <laughs> we have one, zero here, oh, yeah, two, three, three four, <laughs> five, six, seven. Okay, we're just going to keep using zeros. That's our plan. Because why not? Well, if you're, you know, calculated, you'll, like, have barely any map cards left. <laughs> and, like... Having too many map cards is a real problem, too, because it's like 10 seconds a map card. You can just waste minutes by being too conservative. Yeah. Optimally, you only... Well, you obviously don't want to have any left over optimally, but... That's a little tricky. A, yeah, you, you, small buffer. I, I'm usually pretty content with one to two map cards left over. In which case, one to two. It's variance. A little bit more running. And then the uh, main thing with Axel too is obviously you can't use you know the fire deck, so you saw him building Blizzard. He is weak to ice, and uh, those Blizzard boosts are going to come in handy. Yeah, he's also gotten a little bit. Here we bit go. One, one blue, blue, one three, and 99 map cards. So get ready to watch him Dump. spam a lot of high value cards. This door sucks. <laughs> <laughs> this door is one of the reasons you have to do so much yeah. grinding. We we went over, but yeah. Better to play it safe. <laughs> yeah. I'm not farming Castle Oblivion encounters in this marathon. That's no. just. <laughs> Castle Oblivion, Oblivion is one of the worst ones to yeah. have to farm in. Sometimes oh, good. He used the right one. Yeah. It's very important that Axel. Use fire yeah, boost well. instead of quick hit recovery here. Quick hit recovery basically turns four hit raids into two hit raids. Okay, still works. He also is a lot faster. He loves teleporting around like this. Ooh, we turned around nicely. I didn't oh, think for we were a second doing... there, I thought you were going to aim left. Ooh, was that a four? Uh, no, it was four. Yeah, it was four. It was just a quick four. But again, yeah, keeping that spacing is, uh, you know, to be exactly what he wants. Is what yeah, this uh, was a solid fight. That's really good. Nice. Like the the danger with Axel isn't even in like okay you want to have high value Blizzard raids so you can actually break his stuff. That's the only way you deal damage to him. But also like he can just randomly come in and deal like half your life bar if he feels like it. He's just very fickle sometimes. Yeah. I when I lose a run to Axel I don't expect it. And it's like after you get through the gauntlet if you don't die in the gauntlet if Axel kills you that gets yeah. you real salty. And it looks real easy when it goes perfectly, <laughs> but like you said, he could take it away all of your health pretty quickly. So now we're on to uh, Marluxia. Marluxia. Yep. Yeah. The final boss? Yep. Yeah, Marluxia has uh, Marluxia 1 and 2, right? There's the two phases. Yeah. And uh, in Recon, The first phase is way, the... way harder than the second phase. <laughs> I agree. Yeah. This is the real final boss right here. Yep. This is mostly because the first phase actually has a deck, and the second phase is a heartless type boss. But mm -hmm. yeah, and uh, for those of you more familiar with Recom, it's the same way, but they added a Marluxia three uh, third phase to the boss. That is. Uh, That's the only difficult. heartless type boss capable of using slights. Yeah. <laughs> and his slights are not very intimidating. They can be easily dodged, but they take time. Marluxia is very, very aggressive, and we intend to exploit that by comboing in his face with things that are higher than his cards. That card we can't do anything about, but we're glad to see it get used early instead of yeah. killing us. Look at that health. <laughs> yeah, this guy's got a The yellow attack is the most disgusting thing in this game. Yeah, because remember, there's no, you know, equipment that he equips, any armor or nothing like that in, in this game at all. So it's just all it is is it's just kind HP of a Mexican value. standoff when he reloads. <laughs> if we try to swing at him, he'll just juke out of the way. It's not even worth worrying about. 
the timing to dodge this this particular attack is not it's very an obvious. audio it's an audio cue it's like damage yeah. Yeah. you know oh let's believe Ooh. let's do it Into Brazil. I'm ready to go, <laughs> Here we go. So now he gets to do more damage, but at the cost of probably dying if he gets hit again. We actually have the Berserk Bug. I can't oh, no. even <laughs> believe it. Look at this. Oh, my God. That would have been... Okay, okay now okay, we're out okay. of it. Okay. To recap for anyone who didn't catch it, uh, if he's just barely in crit health, he won't actually get the Berserk effect. But now he's got we it. We need to so. use this item. Please, Marluxia. Yeah, so okay, now he's doing go. a lot more damage. Okay, final life bar. Oh, it's not the bad one. All right, Mexican standoff. Yeah, because he doesn't want to just attack him right now. He wants to card break him more than anything else. That's oh. the bad one. Oh. oh, I thought I'd try to make it more entertaining. <laughs> we'll, uh... Thanks, Sonic. We'll go for Berserk for a little less time in this one. Oh, press and start too early to skip the cutscene. Right. Uh, reverse order. Just a lot of focus dodging yeah. <laughs> is really what he can do here. He's got double slate. We can just keep trying to aggressively break his stuff, but I'm just running it out. No need to worry about it. It's good space to reload into. Jesus. These are getting really close. Like, you're getting a shave of that kind of blade. <laughs> He went from using Slate Lock, now he's going to be using Overdrive again. 1.5 times the damage. Nice. The upside of the yellow attack is he's really vulnerable after it's used. It's important to note one thing Ghost is having to kind of keep track of is when he uses these, uh, when Marluxia uses these slates, he needs to actually wait for the slate to completely finish before. Uh, Ghost tries to punish him. We can usually punish the slates easily, but like our value is really poor this time. This time around, it's just something you have to play around. Something you gotta do. And some of the animations are a lot longer than they seem, and so the cards will stay on there longer. Wow, those zeros. It's all right. We aren't getting punished by it yet. Okay. What? Are, no, we're not gonna quite finish him off with overdrive. Ooh. But we might need to not even go to Berserk. Ooh. One more. <laughs> <laughs> That's how bad the Kingdom Key is, guys. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Literally no damage. Nice. That's a very stressful fight to go through. And it's like, I, I, you know, we took a death on all the stressful fights that we, we could have. I was hoping to avoid those, but it was also kind of part of the deal that... <laughs> We're taking these risky strats in a marathon with poor decks sometimes. We were able to kind of avoid some of the grinding earlier, though. Uh, so kind of paid, you know, that trade-off. <laughs> yeah, I mean, he could have, you know, tried to go for some more Moogle points, maybe open another Moogle Four, room. Five, six, but no, he's just seven, making this eight, work. Nine. Um, All right, he's bu uh, building his final deck because he is going right into the next, uh, the final form of Marluxia. One, two, three, four. Oh, six, seven. Organization eight. members have some of the weirdest fights, I swear. Nine. Like final forms. Uh, oh, while, you're, while you're building your deck, I just want to say thank you to the Burning Hunter for $10. He said, hi again, guys. It was a great attempt at Deathless Ghost Wheel. It's not much, but here's 10 to whatever you choose. All right, get it to Terror, man. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> All right, final battle. Let's go. We're going to be doing this mainly with the... Uh, Blizzard and Fire Raids. Yeah, and we, we basically modified our original deck to be compatible with uh, the Raids deck. And, like, we're going to use the Raids in this first part 
It's alright, we still got the damage in. Um, because it's consistent damage on both of the limbs. You just get those hits in. And you don't really get that with combos because they're skew. So even though he resists fire, we get these nine boosted raids exactly enough for Maleficent. Works out for Marluxia too as well. Marluxia 2 is a heartless type boss. His attack patterns are predictable just like Darkseid. And he lags the game like nobody's <laughs> business. But, you know... He's very easy to exploit, and once we get to low health, we're going to start doing our same overdrive into Berserk Straps we've been championing this whole game. And remember, time is going to be coming up fairly soon, but uh, Ghost will call it out. Yeah, yeah. Oh, we got to break that. Now that he's reloaded, Blizzard Boost is gone, which is perfect because he doesn't have any more Blizzards. <laughs> We take some damage just getting berserk here, you know, standard stuff. He's gonna do this, and actually, casually, you want to jump on his back. You do not jump on his back in a speed run. You wait for him to do this. So you're, you're gonna go all out card breaking him. Break, and then he's vulnerable for a certain period of time during which we jam a combo into his face. The only counter to this is his lag, and maybe in this spot, being fast enough with a flower to hit me here. We get six hits in, works out perfectly. He's down to the about a bar and a half left now. Not even taking that chance. Yeah, only four more attacks on this Berserk, so I imagine... Yeah, I'm going to switch overdrive. to Overdrive. We might use it for this first combo because we have the thing. There's no reason not to. So I'm kind of doing it in reverse order from some of the other bosses where you would Overdrive into Berserk. Because we got the, the health early on. Yeah, just look at that lag. It's oh, uh, uh, where's uh, my... Get him, Goof! Ooh. Yeah. No. Uh. We used our third potion there because we... Oh, my God. That was another major mistake. We got to do that again because we couldn't just reload normally on that back phase. We had to use the potion that we had to use there. You don't need to edit the deck again? No, I don't. Okay. It, it saves it. Yeah. Well, that's just silly. Yeah, unfortunately... We're still going to be way underestimate, though. <laughs> <laughs> we, we planned for a lot of bad things to happen in this run. <laughs> there wasn't a good way to reload. Those flowers just were just going to be really oppressive, I could tell. And unfortunately, just re reloading like that, you have to stand still. There is a, uh, an enemy card that lets you reload in, uh, motion. Well, in motion, but... We obviously yeah. didn't pick it up. You also get like four move slot syndrome and with your enemy cards here. You only get to have one art at a time, so you usually want your enemy cards in the run to be okay. damage. Yeah, offensive base. Oh, oh you're getting that, shot. That, uh, that guy usually dies by this point. We're not gonna screw around. We're gonna take the damage afterwards. Yeah, and that last step just kind of shows goes to show like how powerful the item cards can be, especially when you're using a deck that's based around a lot of attack cards. Just not even going to worry about it. Let's overdrive it up. Take it on this. 
Alright, Berserk time. Should hopefully be finishing him out in this last Berserk phase. That That's slow <laughs> over. No, it's the slow overdrive reloads. Uh. <laughs> All right. Hopefully, this will be enough in this part here. That's the scariest part of that yeah, fight. Yeah, I barely got that potion off before the card break. One more. Time. There we go. Nice work, dude. 232 is pretty good for a marathon run. You know, Very we, solid. We, had our, we had our small share of major mistakes on our part and our slightly larger share of RNG on the opponent's part. But, you know, we cleaned it up. It was really, really cool. Um, the one blue showed up. <laughs> and now we're going to ta take care of our incentives. Um, and reset before simple and clean shows up, thank God. <laughs> <laughs> the first incentive we're going to take care of is this Ansem fight, which is really, really technically demanding and really, really awesome. Um, but it's going to be tough for me to explain while it's happening. Yeah, if, you're, yeah. if you're not aware, when you actually do beat Sora's campaign for the first time, you unlock uh, sto uh, Riku's story. And in Riku's story... Uh, for the most part, it's a pretty easy-going uh, experience. You enjoy that, and then you reach this boss. Yeah. <laughs> and the uh, basic combat mechanics work the same, but uh, your deck's fixed. Your deck is fixed. You can't edit it. And Riku has this, uh, you know, dark mode that he can get into. Uh, this which is not is a good start. Regen me, baby. The only, uh, I will say this that's kind of nice is that you, the game, for every boss you kill, you do get their enemy card. So he's got access to things like regen from Ugi. Attack Bracer, Berserk, Overdrive, all the staple boss cards. Yeah. Uh, yes, hi, Summit. Yes, we know, we know Summit. We got in there before the, uh, the chain combo. Yeah, if he decides to use that charge, you can get comboed real quickly. Yeah. Oh, man. One of the things he's going to be trying to do here is he's trying to jump and then attack. It's it's one of the nice things about it. It does a decent chunk of damage when he does it like this, but it also gets past his guard, which is, as you can Oh! oh. That's Oh, it's not good, is it? Okay. Nope. Reload. Oh! oh! Yeah, and because his deck is fixed, he can't edit it. The zeros aren't always, you know, like at the front or at the end. Like Yo, this is a want. pretty good deck, though, for... <laughs> For some of these fixed decks, the Castle Oblivion deck could be a lot worse. Yeah. Plus, also, there's the fact that there's uh, Mickey cards that are dropping randomly during the fight. Those just clog up his inventory and make it that much harder to get to the zeros. He but really if he wants. ever reloads, we get that health back. Yeah, and luckily Riku doesn't have to like, you know, if you do use if you use three reloads oh. in a fight, they all take the same amount of time. He also, in, uh, Unlike Sora. also, uh, you do have access to slight abilities like Dive Frag uh, and whatnot, but they're useless against Ansem. You will almost uh. always break it. It's a rough start. Oh. Uh. Yeah, this is the toughest fight in the we game. We were doing Riku. really well in practice, but I'm going to be honest, it's very late right now for me. <laughs> We've been doing a lot of calm, and we've been. It's, uh, this is like yeah. maybe. And you are specifically hours. doing this at low health as well. Right? Yeah, it's it's not even very consistent. Like he can he can just shove his cards at you, nothing to do about it. We expected to die maybe once here. Um, okay. Oh, also we go into dark mode, which is not really something we explain. But if you break enough cards, you go into dark mode. Yeah. And uh, that's basically how we deal all of our damage. Yeah, it changes how your attacks work and the slights available to you. Yeah, Most well. of the slights don't work on Ansem, though, because he has the stupid guard guy. This is, like, the only consistent strategy against that. Yeah, this is, like, one of the very few cage games where there actually is no secret super boss or anything, but this is pretty much the closest yeah. thing to it. <laughs> it's 
nice. So now he has that regen effect on. Alright. It's looking a lot better. Alright, that regen paying off. Oh, um, guards. <laughs> and attack racer. <laughs> Thank you, everybody, for your donations. Yeah, that was awesome. Okay, so... OC, you want to get set up for the versus race? All right, <laughs> give, me a, a, give me a moment here. I'm gonna Because of this short cable, I have to pull a chair forward. All right. Since we are getting set up for that, I just want to say thank you to everybody that has donated to RPG Card Break 2017. <laughs> um, and we have $5 from LL Blue Mary. He says, hey, Ghost. You're finally streaming at a Europe-friendly time for once. <laughs> so you're, dude, the GBA link cable. We're really bringing out all yeah, the dude. tech for our RPG Lemon Break. <laughs> Who used these for anything other than trading Pokemon? Anyone? Anyone? I used them for this. <laughs> there you go. Okay, so here you go, let's see. Plug her in. Try and keep this close. Yeah. All right. Would you guys prefer to uh, explain what's going on in your heads while you're doing it, or you want me to give you like esports style fast rush commentary? Uh, <laughs> you, get your headphones on. Let's just start out the link while we're doing it. What do you think? This. Just yeah, you get some commentary. We're gonna talk about what's <laughs> happening. Yeah. We're All just right. gonna let this happen. Turn on your control. So Hobbs, who's gonna win? Oh, Ghost Wheel. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Yeah. Ozzy's got a good deck and everything, but Ghost Wheel you're, just you're did all of that run yeah. <laughs> and showed why he, he knows this game super well. All right. Uh, do we want to send any handicaps? No, no handicaps. Okay. <laughs> yeah, come this way, guys. Okay. All right. Okay. Right. Just a little bit. All right. How about... Here. Is that a little better? Yeah, that side. looks a little better. There okay. We go. I'll move over here so I can see. <laughs> yeah, look. You're, that's your back, yep. Yeah, no. <clears throat> All right. Here we go. Let's let's do it. So, uh, Ghost I'm using the speedrun deck. I think it's. What do bomb. we want to fight? Uh, Olympus Coliseum is fine. All that's right. Cool. Let's go to the Coliseum. And I assume Ghost is, is in red and Ozzy's in blue. Yeah. Or the, uh, We're facing the evil Ozzy. <laughs> All right, here we go. <laughs> so, <laughs> Ozzy's not thinking about right. it. He's immediately going to those slides. He's going to be trying to hit him with the Mega Flare here, but Ghost is going to be keeping a close eye on that, trying to make sure he cancels it instantly. Nope. Ozzy did say he wanted to land one Mega Flare and he'd be okay <laughs> with the feed. So, we can take this damage. Ooh. Ghost going for the overdrive. Uh, I don't know what slate that is, though. OC, but it's not a thing. <laughs> <laughs> I actually, unfortunately, the. Uh... Gotcha! Oh! Oh! And suddenly he's back in it. <laughs> the kid's back. <laughs> and remember, there's no cure in uh, in Ghost deck. Oh! 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 <laughs> The battle for the That should have killed you. Okay, we should at least go two out of three because that's what's two out of three. No. <laughs> Come on. What? No, Johns. No, I'm gonna take. I'm we gonna got take my schedule to stick to. <laughs> yeah, we're, we're behind enough as it is. Right. I'm gonna take the W. I'm gonna quit while I'm ahead. I can't believe that freaking hit. You. It didn't kill you. A How bigger, much bigger you comeback have? I've right. never seen. Thank you so much. Um, I hope you enjoyed the com run. I certainly enjoyed working on it. Um, Enjoy the rest of the marathon. Um, thanks again. And thank you to you, Ghost, because that was an awesome run. Thank you. I at least got you a megaphone. <laughs>
<laughs> All right. So as I said, thank you so much for watching that Chain of Memories uh, run during Car Break 2017. And we are going to throw to a quick commercial break. And we'll come right back with I Am The Law, I think. All right, looks like we're back from commercials. Next run here is I Am Satsuna. Here on the host station now, my name is Obda Jr. For the duration of this run, it will be about a four hour run here. We have, uh, <laughs> we have, we have a few uh, donation incentives going on right now. We're cutting off uh, the name for Ender pretty soon here. Uh, at twelve dollars, we have bad breaks. Eleven dollars is Jeff. How does Jeff getting beat? Come on, guys. 
at five dollars for Blundum and Taiho at one dollar. Setsuna, we have The Law, four hundred dollars. That's pretty. <laughs> uh, bread at sixty dollars. Gundam at uh, fifty-five. Taiho at one and Jeff at one. Definitely unmuted. So. Oh, now? Okay. All right. Oops. Sorry. <laughs> yep, my bad. <laughs> you can't cut off the law. <laughs> <laughs> 